Okay, Jennifer, I'm going to explain this sworn video statement form. Um, and as I've, we're now being recorded, this is not new to you. We've done this once before. Okay. I want to take, before we get this, try and take that first interview that we had, which was, you know, hours after what, what had transpired, put it aside. It's almost like we've never spoken before. Okay. So we're starting afresh. We're starting from new. That way you're not going to say, I think I already told him that. Don't worry about what you've already told me. So this is a statement of Jennifer Pan, and the incident number is uh, for the murder investigation is uh, 310188 of 2010. Jennifer, do you, ever, do you understand that everything that's being said in this room is being videotaped? Yes. Okay, my name is uh, Randy Slade, and I'm a detective with the York Regional Police. My badge number is 531. There's no one else present in the room other than you and I, and monitoring this statement next to us is Deborah Gladding. Uh, today is Thursday, November the 11th, 2010. The time on my watch is 9.43 in the morning. We are presently videotaping at 5 District in the town of Markham in the regional municipality of York. Um, is there anything... We're back to this question again about is there anything else uh, I need to know in order to better understand your statement? And that is, do you suffer from any mental illness? Have you been drinking? Did you take any drugs? No drugs, no drinking. So there's nothing that's going to influence your statement? I'm just a little nervous. Okay. Don't be nervous, okay? I, I know that's tough to say, but don't be nervous. The truth is always the best way to relieve anxiety, okay? We are investigating an alleg allegation of uh, murder of your mom, Bichha Pan. As a part of our investigation of this fest if offense, I would like to interview on videotape and under oath, solemn affirmation or solemn declaration. It is my obligation to advise you of certain information before we commence this statement. Just want it redundant. Remember me telling you about that. So just to reiterate, uh, we're in the middle, or starting the uh, middle portion of the video KGB. I've just turned on my digital audio recorder just, just in case for fail-safe measures. Um, it's now 9.45. We began the video statement portion at 9.43. And I'm just at the portion of the video statement form. Um, Jennifer, can you spell your name for me? J-E-N-N-I-F-E-R. And last name? P-A-N. Okay. So it's my obligation to advise you of certain information before we commence this statement. You may be a witness in court concerning the events you're about to describe in your statement. If at any time you change your statement or claim not to remember the events, the contents of this video statement you give now may be used as evidence in court. Do you understand? Yes. And for the audio recording, just to date it, it's the 11th of November, and I already said 945. Um, these are the criminal code sanctions. Remember I told you the explaining of the, of the facts of uh, that there's certain penalties for not telling the truth or misleading the police. It's also my obligation to advise you that fabricating evidence with the intent to mislead is an offense under Section 137 of the criminal code. And if you give a false statement under oath, you may be charged with fabricating evidence. If convicted of fabricating evidence, you could be sentenced up to 14 years in jail. It is also an offense under Section 139 of the Criminal Code to obstruct by willfully attempting to obstruct, pervert, or defeat the course of justice. And you may be charged if you obstruct justice. If convicted of obstructing justice, you could be sentenced up to 10 years in jail. It is also an offense under Section 140 of the Criminal Code to commit public mischief by causing a police officer to start or continue an investigation by making a false statement that accuses some other person of committing an offense. And you may be charged if you commit public mischief if convicted of public mischief, you could be sentenced up to five years in jail. If you are charged with one or more of the above uh, offenses, this statement may be used as evidence against you. Do you understand the criminal sanctions I've explained to you? Yes. Do you understand the criminal consequences of making a false statement? Yes. 
do you understand that it's your choice to get whether or not you want to give a statement? Yes. Do you understand the importance of telling truth in regards to this investigation? Yes. If you've spoken to a police officer or any person in authority in connection with this investigation, I want it to clearly understood. I don't want it to influence you in making a statement. Do you understand that? Yes. Do you have any questions? Are you prepared to give a video statement under oath or solemn, sorry, solemn affirmation or declaration at this time? Yes. Okay, I'm just going to bring the commissioner in and then we can get on with it. Hello. I'm Sonia Ficini. I'm a commissioner and I'm just going to swear you in for your statement, okay? Will you be swearing on the Bible or will you... Just place your right hand there, please. And your first name is Jennifer? Yes. Last name of Pan? Yes. Okay. Do you, Jennifer Pan, swear or declare that the evidence that you give in this investigation shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Thank you, sir. Okay. So, what we're going to do now is, as I said, what what education level do you have? Just a high school. High school? Have you gone to any other curriculum, like after school, a higher level of education? Have you been working towards anything? Uh, I'm going back to school, and I have been working on a piano education. Okay. There's no other education that you've sought, like you haven't gone to university at this point in time? Okay. So, um, I, want, I want you to f forget or put aside the first statement that we had talked about. Okay. This is going to be where I'm going to ask you to start from the day, okay, on the 8th, leading up until when you when the police become involved in an incident that takes place in your house. I want you to tell me about your day, what you do, your interaction with your parents, okay? So we're at, what we are is we're dealing with the incident. We're not dealing with your history right now, we're dealing with the incident again. To see if anything else comes, forgetting what you've already told me, and bring yourself through that day and through the event. And we'll see if what we're, we're going to see if we've learned or if you've remembered anything else. And there's some questions with respect to that uh, statement that I'm going to ask you about. Okay, so, but I'm going to let you start again, and and let's let's move forward from any time in that day where you want to start. If it's the time you woke up, or if it's the time that your first interaction, it's your choice. Okay, I'm just I'm very nervous, and I why don't are you let's why, why are you why are you nervous? Tell me about why you're nervous. Because I don't want to say the wrong things. Oh, yeah, so because that you, day was a lot. You're right. And I've been scattered, and so bits and pieces are here, and some pieces aren't here, and I'm just... So, I want you to sit back in your chair, okay? Just sit back in your chair, take a deep breath, okay? Close your eyes. Just follow my line. Just sit back in the chair for a second. Sit back. Relax it's the best you can. Close your eyes. And just breathe for a minute. Okay? We're not in any type of danger. We're nowhere. We're in a very safe place. Okay? And we're going to work through this. And don't worry about what you forget or what you mix up or whatever you're doing. Is You start and pl push the play button for that day. And if you stick to everything that you remember happening that day, it will come out in sequence. Okay? And I'm going to show you a technique after we go through this that will, sh that will show it to you. Okay? So let's just start. You've taken a deep breath. You've relaxed. You're in a good position right there. Let's start from the beginning of the day.
when you wake up and let's start moving forward from there. What I can remember is when I woke up, I had some breakfast and I went upstairs to do some piano history and I was on the computer. What time is that around? I'm not a hundred percent sure. Time isn't like is it you know time is important meaning is it is it in the beginning of the is it morning is the light out or is it in the afternoon like probably when? maybe before noon. Before noon, sometime before noon. Yes. Okay. Before noon, um, I play some Facebook games so I was doing that and then I stopped and then I was doing some studying for my piano. Like I said, I was working towards a piano degree in teaching. So I was uh, reading some history notes and going over some practice examination papers. Who's in the house at that time? My father has left for work and my mother's home. Okay. Where's your mom? Do you know where she is? don't remember at this point. Okay. I for, I'm getting the last few days all mixed up together. Uh, I believe she had left with my aunt to go and visit my grandfather that morning okay. or early afternoon. Um, he is residing, oh, sorry, he reside, resided at a uh, Manchun nursing home and he had just gotten back from the hospital uh, Saturday. Okay. So she went in, I don't remember if she took my aunt, but she went in to uh, see if she could uh, see how the nurse, the nurse got any updates on him and see if she could feed him. Um, when she had left, she had called me and she asked me to come out because there were some police officers on the street. And I went out and uh, I asked, the police officers came up and they said that there was a gas leak on our street and to exit our, uh, exit our house. So I said, uh, if it would be possible, could I go in and grab a jacket because I was still in just regular clothes. So I went in, and when I came out, my mother said that they wouldn't let her take out the car either. So we were gonna, we decided to, we were gonna walk across the street to a relative's house there. And before we could get to our relative's house, uh, the officers got a message or a memo from an, from their fellow officers saying that our side was secure and that it might be from another area. So from there, I went back into the house. Do you remember what time that was? Again, it was before noon. Before noon, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was before noon. So before noon, and now your mom's come back from... No, not yet. Not she's, she's on it. She was... Leaving to, to go out, yes. okay. So she left to go pick up my aunt and go in to my grandfather's, and I went back up to on the computer to do a little studying, taking a break, and playing some games. Um... Do you remember speaking to anyone during the day on your on your phone or on the on Facebook? Um, later on in the day, yes, I spoke to a longtime friend, Andrew, who I went to elementary school with. Um, but just the usual, he he just asked if we could uh, hang out anytime soon. But I explained to him that I wasn't able to leave the house and I couldn't meet up with him. So I asked him how his life was, how his girlfriend, how his job was going. Um, I believe that was later on in the day, though. That wasn't in the afternoon. We'll go in later in the in when we, when we talk about your past, about why you couldn't leave the house. Okay, so uh, that isn't that hasn't gone unnoticed, but we're not going to talk about that right now. We're talking about that day. Okay. So continue on. Um, I think my mom came home at about three or so. I'm not sure where she went with my aunt. She uh, came home and unpacked and started preparing dinner. Um, my father came home. My father came home about 4.20, 4.30. It was later than he usually does. He normally comes home about 10 to 4. 
Um, when my mother asked him <clears throat> where he had been, he had said he had forgotten to lock his toolbox at work or something about along the lines of he had to go back to work because he had forgotten to uh, close something or lock something up. Where does your dad work? Um, <clears throat> Kobe and Stell. Um, it's Middlefield and South of Finch. Okay. Continue. So um, he comes. He's home now, late at four twenty, four thirty. Four thirty, and he phoned and asked my uncle Nam if he wanted to go to go buy some, like heat covers and a USB pen. So he immediately left. Not shortly after that, maybe four thirty, a little bit after that, and on Monday nights my mother goes dancing. So she had finished dinner, and me and her ate dinner first. What time did you guys have dinner around? 5, 5.30. Mm -hmm. And then she had, then my father came home and he had dinner. And what time did your dad get home? I, I'd say sometime between 6 and 6.30 because my mother was able to clean up before going out to dancing. When your dad comes home, do you remember seeing what type of bags he was carrying when he came in? I, I wasn't downstairs when he came through the door. I had gone upstairs already. Okay. So you don't know where he went shopping at? Um, all I know is that when I came down to greet him after he'd come home, he had shown me this uh, heating cover that he had bought for the house. Didn't have a label on it? Didn't You didn't he see He took it out of the bag or I, he, did, he just showed me the the cover itself. He didn't... Like Did I'm, you see the USB stick? I believe the USB stick was for my uncle. If they bought it or not, I don't know. I'm not sure. Okay, so it's now six to six thirty because your dad's now home and eating, mm -hmm. and your mom said you say your mom cleans up. Yeah, and then she leaves at seven, and my father goes up to his computer like he normally does. Yes. And he's on the computer watching like news. I'm not sure what he's doing. I'm in my room. Well, uh, I believe at this point I had called my friend. Hang on, let's make sure. I gotta make sure that the, the tape recorders didn't just click off, okay? Because we had a bit of a power flicker. So just give me a second. Okay, so we're still, we're still. Okay, so we're at, uh, we're at seven o'clock, right? And your mom's getting ready to go. So continue on. So she leaves, and I, my friend Adrian had asked if we would do our movie night like we normally do. He comes over with uh, TV shows, uh, some of our favorites to watch um, together. So he had come over, I'm sorry, I, this, the timeline's a little off. Uh, yeah. He had come over around, I think I told him, I messaged him around 6 o'clock. He came over about 6 26:30. What and when you say message him, was it Facebook or was Text it your phone? Text messaging. Text message. Yeah. And what was the phone? Which phone is it that you use? Which phone number? Uh, my Rogers phone. Your Rogers phone, yeah. and yeah. six four seven. Uh, nine six five two one one eight. Okay, so that's the message. And th is that the first communication you had with him that day? I think I had messaged him at three o'clock. You know, he had messaged me around in the afternoon sometime, asking me if it was TV was on tonight. Okay. And then I had messaged him, I'm done, you can come over whenever. I think that was the gist of the message. I. So what time does he arrive again? He arrived around s between 6 and 6.30. So your mom and dad are both home? My parents are home and he came in, he greets them as usual. They, they ask him how everything was going. And then my mom had left for uh, dancing and we were downstairs watching... Um, that day we watched Gossip Girl and How I Met Your Mother. Um, is this are these live TV shows or are these recordings? Uh, he he brings them on a USB pen. Okay. When your mom leaves, what is she wearing? I didn't pay attention. Do you remember what she was wearing when you were having dinner? Uh, she was wearing her pajamas when we were having dinner. What do they look like? Um, they're like green with like Winnie the Pooh. Okay. Um, so when you say when she leaves to go out, 
Would she have changed? Yes, because I was, like I said, my friend came around like 6.30, so we were already downstairs watching movies by when she went up to change quickly and go to her dance class at 7. Okay, and what car does she take when she leaves? She takes the Lexus. Is that the only car she drives? Uh, pretty much. My father drives the, his Mercedes and my mother drives the Lexus. Do, you, uh, do they have, like, parents have different kinds of routines. Do they have a routine where they park the car in the garage, out of the garage? Or Normally which side? inside, but uh, if we plan to go out again, um, we park our car outside, but only the Lexus. So my mother, when she came home from, like I said, going out with my aunt, she had parked the car outside. Okay. So when my friend came, he parked it beside her. Okay. Um, closer to the door. And where do they usually in the garage? Is there? Do they just take out either side, no, or do no, they? No, uh, no. The Lexus is normally on the when facing the house. When it's looking at the house. Uh, left side. Left side is the Lexus. And the Mercedes is on the right, closer to the door. Okay. Door. No other cars in the house. No, just the two cars. Just those two. Okay. So your mom's goes. Did you see her change her clothes? Unfortunately, I, I was watching. I was just watching my TV show. And where were you friend. watching? In the basement. In the basement. Yeah. So when you say that she's wearing her, her pajamas and she goes upstairs and change, is that something you know or you're speculating? No, for sure she has to change into regular clothes to go and okay. to go dancing. Okay. That's something that I didn't see it, but I know for sure that that's what she does. Okay. So your mom goes, and where's your dad at this point? He is... Uh, well, like I said, around 6.30, he was just finishing up dinner. And after he finished dinner, he went up, he goes upstairs and goes on the computer. So let's talk about the layout of the house before we move on any further here. You're in the basement. Yes. Okay. Um, and it's just the two of you, you and Adrian. Yes. The, the main level, the ground level. What's okay. on the ground level? Um, what we call our living dining room with my piano. Yes. And then behind that is my family room. Okay. And then the side of the family room is our, our kitchen. So it, are they in separate locations, living room, dining room, or is it living is it dining it's room, dining room? It's by more than a half. Like a, there's a wall, but there is a way to walk from living room. Dining room, living room are combined, sorry. Okay. Uh, but to go to the family room, there's like a wall. But there is like a, um, not a doorway, but like a, a An archway? Op op opening. Yes. To go okay. through to the family And the kitchen room. is where? Um, in the front back side the back of the house the back of the house yes okay you go up the stairs what's what's on the stairs where what's upstairs how many bedrooms are up uh, there four bedrooms but one we use as a study and where's the study located uh, that's the front of the house beside my parents uh, my parents bedroom okay and where's your bedroom located um, the back uh, the back of the house and is there another bedroom back there too? Uh, there's one more bedroom back there, and that's used for my brother or my cousin, depending on who comes home. Okay, and your cousin, who's? Uh, his name is Curtis, and he goes to school in Waterloo. Okay. Um, during co-op the last co-op season, he co-opted in Toronto, so he stayed with us for four months. Curtis's last name? Leon. 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 Okay. We'll get to Curtis after. So now we're back. Your 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 um, your dad is upstairs. Did you see him go to the computer room? Like I said, I you're was speculating. Walking. Yes. That's what his normal routine is. That's his normal routine. You're in the basement. Yes. Did you hear me? Your mom leave? Or your yes. 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 Okay. And how do your parents leave when they're taking their cars? Now this time you say the car was out in the driveway. Did mm -hmm. you hear how? The, did when you say you heard your mom leave? How? What? What? Where did she go out? Because uh, where how the house is laid out, the stairwell is in the middle of the house, so she would have to walk. She would have to walk across the stairs to go to the front door, so I I heard her pass through, okay, and leave through the front door. If you park your cars in your garage, how do you get, do they, do your parents come, close the door and come out and into the house or do they? No, come? if they park in the garage, they come through, there's an entrance from the garage to the house, inside the garage. How many ways are there to get into your house other than breaking a window? Like how many? Uh, how do many doorways, doorways, three. So there's Well, there's a, the, there's a door from the garage. Yes. Um, the front doorway and the, the backyard. In the backyard. Okay. So, um, 
it's now seven o'clock or beyond, your mom's gone, your dad's, you believe, upstairs in the computer room, in the office, and you're downstairs with Adrian mm -hmm. watching either the How I Met Your Mother or Gossip, Girl. Gossip Girls. Well, a few episodes. Do you talk to anyone or text message anyone throughout uh, the time that you're with Adrian? No. Does Adrian talk or text message anyone throughout the no, time? his phone wasn't, I believe his phone was aside. Okay. Um, and then what happens? Uh, nine o'clock comes and he says after that fi final episode we watch he's like it's time for me to go home so I see him out and I went upstairs and got ready for bed okay and did you see your dad or hear your dad when you went upstairs when I went upstairs he was in his computer room like he normally is and on the computer at that point in time okay and your mom's not home no she her dancing doesn't finish till about nine so she doesn't get home till closer to 9 30 okay so you're in your bedroom, and what are you doing? I'm, at this point, I was on the phone with my friend Andrew. Okay. And just talking to him, and then event after, and watching TV. And then that was, I don't remember how long the conversation was, but then I ended up calling my friend Edward. So Andrew, Andrew is? An old high school friend. Okay, and is he the one that? was uh, you had talked to this is the person you said you were talking to you're trying who was asking about meeting up with you yes so you were actually talking on the phone with him now yes did you you were talking on Facebook with him earlier no I was uh, text messaging him. text really. messaging him were you talking to anyone on Facebook at the same time because I know I know I believe, you guys can multitask no I believe my Facebook I keep my there's a chat window and I keep that as offline unless okay. I intend to speak to one of my friends regarding one of the games I play. So when you're talking to Andrew, you're not talking to anyone else? No. When you're talking to Edward, you're not talking to anyone else? I don't have a computer in my room. Okay, so that's, that answers the question, is that there's no computer in the room. No. How many computers are in the house? Uh, there's one computer. I'm not sure about towers because my brother recently took one to school with him. But I know there's one fully working computer and my mother has a laptop. Do you use either? Um, like I said, I was on the main computer earlier. Yes. And the laptop I use occasionally, but not too often. Did you use it that day? I don't, I don't remember to be honest, but I don't believe I did. And what services do you use when you're using the, the laptop or, or the other? What, what You say you're on Facebook. Is there yes. any other chat lines or any other? Sometimes I have uh, an MSN open, but rarely. I don't like to be on MSN too much. Okay. Um, so uh, now we're at 9 o'clock, and you're into the conversation. You've had, finished your conversation with Andrew, and now mm -hmm. you're speaking to Edward. What time is it, do you think? 9.15, 9.30. When you're talking to Edward, is your mom, have you heard your mom come in yet? I heard my mom come in, so I asked him to hold. Okay. Uh, he had hung up. So when I went down, I was like, hi, mom. And then I saw her. She had changed into her pajamas, and she was downstairs watching TV. Again, so let's down. stop it right there. Just hold it in check, is that when she came in, did you see her? I didn't see her come in. Okay, no, when you heard her come in, mm -hmm. when you, and you say she changed into her pajamas. She went up the stairs. You heard her come up the stairs? I heard my mom come up the stairs and okay. go into her bedroom. Okay. And then when I went down, like, she went back down the stairs, and that's when I went out, and I went down the stairs, and that's when I noticed she was in her pajamas and just watching TV. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did you see your dad? He had gone to back to his bedroom to call it a night. He, his door was closed, but uh, he wasn't on the computer. You could see in the computer room that he wasn't he was there. Not there. So this is after your mom. After your mom arrives home, you've heard her come up the stairs, go into the go in the room. You're suspecting she's changed because by the time you follow her down the stairs, she's I in her kitchen. I didn't follow her. She went down, yeah. and then I went after. Sure, you went down to talk to your mom. Just to make sure she was. Okay. Mm -hmm. What like kind normal. of what kind of pajamas is she wearing at this time? Green Winnie the Pooh. She went changed back into her green Winnie the Pooh pajamas. Okay. When you come downstairs, are you noticing? Is there any problems? Any issues? Anything out of the norm when you go down? Because you said you went down to check on her and see how she was. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that's strange? Is there anything different? Not that I know. She was just on the couch like she normally is, watching television, winding down. Okay. 
and that's now um, you're saying 9 15 to 9 30 she gets home that's after that obviously just a little bit after that yeah. okay and then what happens i go back up my stairs and i call ed again okay and uh i had to use the washroom so i did put him on mute for a quick second and then i came back and i was just watching tv and talking with ed okay how long are you now upstairs on the phone with it with edward I'm sorry, but that time frame, just, I, I'm not sure. Okay. Um, your cell phone records are going to give us the exact times. Okay. Okay, so are, have you talked to anyone else? Is, is it you hang up with Edward, go down and see your mom, mm -hmm. come back upstairs, yes. call Edward, yes. use the washroom, mm -hmm. on the phone with Edward still? Yes. Have you talked to anyone else? No. Okay. Have you text message anyone else? No. How many? I don't believe I had did no. Do you have more than one phone? I had one, but I keep that. I just keep the SIM card. Yes. Um. Again, we will go into the, in the history. Sure. But uh, my cell phone gets taken away from me sometimes. Okay. And so I had um, a friend of mine, Daniel. He bought. He got a SIM card for me to use sometimes, but I take the SIM card out when I finish it, and I normally keep it in my pocket so my parents wouldn't find it. Yes. But I don't remember the last time I I used it. Okay, but you didn't use that SIM card that day? No, okay. I did not know. You did not? I don't remember the last time. Maybe it was a few days before that. It was, the last time I remember using it was when my grandfather had, was in the hospital, and I had messaged him and he asked me how my grandfather was. And how long, when is that time frame that your grandfather went into the hospital? He was in the hospital for about 10 days. 10 days, okay. So that's the last time you remember using that SIM card associated yes. to, uh, from what your friend had given you yes. was about 10 days earlier or even 12 days earlier because I believe you said your grandfather had come out of the hospital or was he still in the hospital? Yes. No, he was in the hospital for 10 days. Yes. On Saturday he had gone back to his nursing home. And this is Monday we're talking so about. So it's about 12 to 14 days earlier that this happened, that you use, you use the SIM card, you're guessing. With the, probably more, within a week, yeah. Within a week? Yeah, because I messaged him Give or take while, seven days, is that what you were saying? Yeah, because uh, I would message him when my grandfather was in the hospital. Okay. Yeah. And where is that SIM card now? I'm not sure, I don't remember. I had it in my jacket pocket but I don't remember where it is now. Okay, so we're now back to, you're on the phone with Edward. Uh, and yes. again, the history stuff, you're right. We'll, I don't want it to get convoluted in here, but we need to, you know, we'll talk about that stuff after. So we're back on track here. It's now, you're back on the phone. You've come from the washroom, taken the mute button off, and you're now on the phone with Edward. Mm -hmm. Where's your mom? Have you heard your mom come up the stairs? Is she, she still downstairs? She's still downstairs. She's still downstairs. Okay. Continue on. Um, just, I had my TV on because I was watching TV. Yes. Uh, I don't remember what show I was watching. I believe it was Amazing, Amazing Race. I'm, I'm not 100% sure at this moment. Uh, but I was watching TV and on the phone with Ed as well. Okay. And then... I, the next thing I remember is my mother calling down for my father. What is she saying? She's calling him by his name and to come down. Okay, does, so give us verbatim what do you hear her saying. Is it in v the Vietnamese Chinese or yes, is it in English? It's in Vietnamese. Okay, and what do you hear her say? In Vietnamese? She's like, Han ơi, sớm day. And what does that translate to? Uh, that's my father's name, Han. Uh, come down here. Does she say anything else associated with that? With that? I can't hear clearly because, like, I was on the phone and the TV was on. Sure. But that's what I heard. Is she yelling, or is it um, at normal? It's a loud. It's a. She's not yelling, but it's a loud tone. Okay. And normally that tone means that I need to go down and see what's happening. Usually, so that's when I told him. I told Edward. I was like, okay, I gotta go. I'll call you later. And I hang up the phone with him. Have you heard anything else at this point in time? As I'm hanging up the phone with him, I hear footsteps going up the stairs. Okay. But they're not 
they're heavier footsteps than what is to be expected from my parents. Okay. And then I hear mumbling, and someone's in the master bedroom, and I hear the bed being tossed, and I just froze where I was. I have to say, I don't know how long they were in there, but I heard somebody go down the stairs. So at this point, I opened my door. I peered out, and there was a person in the my what would have been my brother's room. And where's your brother's room located? Uh, just a little bit down the like I could see my from my doorway to his doorway, just okay. a little bit down the hall. Okay. And he looks at me and he pulls out his gun. And he walks towards me and like sits me down on my bed. Because my bed is within a step from my door. And he's like, where's the money? Do you have any money? Give me your money. So I had some money that I had saved up from serving. And I was also planning on buying a new cell phone because my contract was finishing with Rogers. And the phone I'm currently using has not good reception. So I had about $2,000 saved up. And so I opened my drawer and I pointed at it. And he picked it up and took the cash and put it in his pocket. At this point, he ties my hands behind my back. And he walks me out. Okay, so stop right there for a second. Okay, I want you, now that you've got him right there, I want you to describe him to me. What you can remember, every little detail. He's black with dreadlocks. How long are the dreadlocks? They about show me on your on your on your own body where they where you would see them about at. shoulder length okay but they were long enough that they were able to move uh he's i would he's medium build and he is slight when i was standing i was almost eye level with him and you're how when tall? he came up to me. I'm about 5'7". Okay. <sighs> clothing? All I could remember is dark clothing. Now you got to, you've got a gun pointed at you. Yes, Describe and then the he told... Okay, uh, the gun was black with... Um, almost not a triangle but it kind of tapered a little on the handle and I would describe it as like um, what I see on TV for like police officers kind of like I like guess like a handgun sort of thing and the whole time he kept telling me to look down Because my bedroom was dark, but the hallway was lit. So he kept telling me to look down, look down. <sighs> At this point... Any accent? Not from this particular person. Does he sound like he was born and raised in Canada? I'd say... I would say that he was born in Canada, but... like There was no sign of an accent in his... And that's what we I mean culturally. I'm talking about the language. You know, like you can tell someone who's spent a long time as a young age from starting because there there is no it's it's normal normal speech. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. Can you see anything on his hands? Uh, he's wearing gloves. What type of gloves? Uh, black leather gloves. Okay. Now facial experience before you t he tells you to look down do you see anything is he got a wide nose is he got is his um, any pock marks any acne any facial hair no 
the only thing I can really make out is just the general shape of his face. Which because is? Because the only thing I could... The thing that caught my attention was... The, which was? The gun. Okay. What about his facial? What about what he looks like? Tell me about that you said about the size or the, the uh, shape of his face. It's not round, but it's... It's not a narrow face. I... Um, his, he didn't have, like, his cheeks were protruding, but they were, they're not like the normal people, um, it, oh, well, it's almost like a roundish, squarish face, mm -hmm. uh, his, Cheeks, he had cheeks. It wasn't like uh, like um what they call um the defined um the the cheekbones. Yes. Like it was it was almost like round. A full a full like there was some meat there, right? Mm, like I wouldn't I wouldn't say fat. Like it wasn't like a yeah. protruding, but it was there was no like definition. Okay. And now this guy's age, and I know it's very difficult to define, but. Um, you know, people age differently, and they have different appearances. Where would you put this 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 guy? Uh, very late twenties to early thirties. So, be I would if I had to put numbers, I'd say somewhere between twenty eight to about thirty three. If you saw a picture of this guy in a composite, like a, on a profile, do you think you can identify? Him? I wouldn't be a hundred percent certain. Okay, so if on. everyone looked, like if everyone had dreadlocks and the face was very familiar, I d didn't get a very very clear look at his face because, I'm sorry, but the the only thing I could really see was that he had pointed that at me. And okay. Now I think uh, another possibility is just based on you. If we sat you in front of a composite drawer, it sounds like you could give them some some raw information that might be able to help in that area, okay? So if you can't do that ID, that, that, that one's still available, okay? So now, he's, uh, you've given, he's taken your money. Where, and where exactly was your money located? Uh, I, my TV's on, uh, on a bedside table, and I keep it in a little book, almost uh, uh, a day planner, but I don't use it for day planning. Okay. Um, it, it was a gift from friends. And what are you wearing right now? Um, I'm wearing what I was prepared to go to bed. I'm wearing my black pants and um, uh, an old figure skating uh, sweater that I had gotten. Describe the sweater to me. Like, what is it? Does it have pockets? Does it have a hood? Does it? Is it just a sweater? No, like? it's just a like a slip-on sweater. No hood. No pockets. Okay. So when you get off the phone with Edward and you're saying, where does this phone go? I stick it uh, right here on the back side of my pants. Back side of your pants? Yes. So in the waistband? Yes. Okay. You open the door, you see this figure, he's coming, he's taking the money. And the bed the nightstand is on what side of your bed? If you're it's looking at the, at the if you're it's looking at the front of your bed this way, where is the nightstand? nightstand? It's in front of my bed. Okay, so it's, it's right beside the the door? Yes. <sighs> the uh, the the nightstand, the TV, and my bed is long towards the TV to watch. Did he take anything else from your room? Not when I was there, no. Not when you were there? No. Okay. Did he toss your room? I don't... While you were there? No. Okay. So he takes you, you're, you're let out, out, to, out of the hallway now, and what happens? And Are the lights in the hallway still on? Yes, but he's telling me to look down. Okay. And at this point now, he's behind me. He had grabbed me at the shirt, and he had pulled me in front of him and uh, was pushing me towards the stairs. Okay. What does he say? He keeps yelling, hurry up, hurry up. Do what we're saying. 
and no one will get hurt. Okay. And then he takes me down the stairs. And the lights on the main floor were all turned off. We take... Uh, my stairs are a little curved. And we just went... He sat... He made me... Pushed me down by my shoulders and told me to sit on the floor. Do you feel the gun? Is he using his hand? He's using his hand to lead me down the stairs and force me to sit down. Uh, only one hand. Okay. Do you see the gun again? At this point, I'm looking down and he's behind me, so okay. I don't see his gun. Um, but I can see there's two other shadows, and I can see from where I was standing, my father was sitting on the right, and my mother was sitting on the left. Sitting where? On a couch. On our couch. Sitting on the couch. Are they looking out towards you? No, their backs are towards me. Okay. And you're now on the ground level? Are you on the floor? Or yes, on the I'm sitting, sitting on, the, on the floor? I'm sitting on the floor. All right, where are your hands? They had tied my hands. So let's go I said. let's go back up to the stairs. Remember we said take the other statement and whatever we've said before. No, I, I said it earlier. Okay, then we must let's let's get back to that area. I think you might have touched on it. We went back into the description. So where does you where do you get your hands tied and where does the string come from? I'm not sure where the string comes from, but he had the string. Okay. And he, after I gave him my money, that's when he tied my hands. And how did that happen? Where were you in the room, in the hallway? Where did he that happen? He told me to sit down on the edge of my bed. Yes. And that's when I opened, he, show, he show, told me, show, show me. And I pulled open my, my drawer, my dresser, and he saw the money and he picked it up my book and then he opened up the book and grabbed the cash put it in his pocket okay at this point he still has the gun pointing towards me and he you're doing great you're doing fabulous okay so he's got the gun pointed at you and how do the hands get behind your back he told me to put my hands behind my back. Okay. Continue. I believe he had... I'm sorry, I'm just trying to be 100% certain. Mm -hmm. And it's just... It's pieces that I'm... Then roll through them. We'll put the pieces together. Uh, uh, You've got the money out of the drawer. Open the drawer. He had He's put it in his pocket. I'm sitting on my bed. Yes. And he had told me to put my hands behind my back. Okay. But it was dark. So I believe he told me to stand up so he could tie my hands together. And I was trying to make it loose so I could I could do something, but he had pulled them so tight, and he made sure I squealed before he before he let go. Is your TV on? Okay. My TV's on the whole time. Okay. So you've squealed. They're tight, and they're behind your back. And that's when he grabs me and starts leading me down the stairs. Okay. Does he pat you down or search you or do anything? Thank goodness, no. Because if he had pat me down, he would have found my phone. Okay. So you, you're you now down at the bottom of the stairs. You've At this point in time, you've only seen one person, or have you seen the others before you get to the bottom of the stairs? Before I get to the bottom of the stairs, I had seen one person. Okay. So now you're at the bottom of the stairs. And he keeps telling these guys to hurry up, hurry up, it's taking too long. And he, he told me to look down, but I was able to see out of my peripheral. I 
a man that I will call number three because I associated with him the least. He had a gun pointed at my father, asking him if he had money in his wallet and where the money was in the house. And he asked my father how much he had in his wallet. And my father answered him, $60. And he kept yelling, you better not be lying to me. Is there more? Where is the rest? And another person who was hiding behind the wall in the kitchen from where I stood, I couldn't see him at first. He had was asking my mother where her purse was. So hang on a second. Who is this? Is this another another guy? Is this number a number? You've gone from a number one to a number three. Yes, I I call this guy number two. Okay, so number three. Let's stick with number three. What what can you describe of him, if anything, including the gun? I can only see that there was a round, uh, kind of like a revolver. <sighs> Sorry. That's okay. Remember, if you have to stop and take some deep breaths, it, that really does help the process. His gun had what you call, a, I believe, a revolver. It like one of those things you see in old, old Western movies. <clears throat> and he had, I could just see uh, almost like a silhouette of it from the light uh, coming through the, the curtain. So in proximity now, you're looking through the peripheral, okay? Uh, is it you're looking right or left from where you are? Uh, right. You're looking right. So you're looking over here to the right, okay? And you can see your backs of your mom and dad who are sitting on the couch. Yes. Can you see what they're wearing? I can't see what my father's wearing. Can you see what your mom's wearing? At that point in time, I couldn't see what my mother's wearing. It was later on that I saw what she was wearing. Okay, so we'll go on to later on then. So there you can see them in the back. And where is the silhouette in relation to your mom and dad? Standing in front of my father. Okay. So is, is, is a house, this, the, what, what lights are on on the ground level? None. He, they cracked open the fridge a few times for light, but the only light on the main floor was the one shining through the windows and doors. The, this number three guy, you hear him speak. What, is, what, do you, what do you notice about or know about his, his um, uh, the, the words he's speaking, accent, if any? It's, um, it's, uh, he's not from, well, he wasn't, the accent's not what I normally hear. It was almost Caribbean, like Jamaican or Guyanese or like that kind of accent. Mm, yep. Um, have you got friends who, like, reason I ask you is, is the Jamaican accent or the Guyanese accent, have you got friends who have that accent mm -hmm. that you recognize it? Growing up, there was, uh, growing up, uh, one of my friends uh, was from Guy Guyana, and uh, I remember vaguely, like, when his parents came for uh, school functions. It was sort of something like that. So it's tweaking you to some, a care, a, like a, a Western Caribbean island area. Is what, like is Jamaica what? or, or um, Guyana, something, something like that. Okay. So you hear him talk and he, describe his silhouette to me, what you see of it. All I could see is that he's slim and tall. Um, again, I was sitting on the floor, but... No race. He, it, it was dark, but I. You can't I, put a race to him. Not with. I don't want to put a race with voice. I want a race by color. I could not see. It was dark. I could not see his face. Okay. And now number two. Okay. You say that doors, fridge doors. Where does he come into play? Where do you first see him? I first see him when he's asking my mother where her purse is. And. Um, they kept telling us that if we just cooperated, everything would be okay. 
So the, the, she. The, I just just to interrupt you because we I want to stay on get back to three before we move on to two. Is is three when is is number three? How is his interaction with her father when he's telling him about demanding the money, and the only money and not lying to him? Is this like is he talking in a low monotone voice or is he yelling at him? How is the how's the interaction going? A stern voice. Stern, but not screaming. Not angry. Okay, so I interrupted you. Now back to number two, where he's asking your mom for her wallet. Her purse. Her purse. Her purse. At first, and this is at the point where my mother stands up, and that's when I saw. That's when I saw her clothes again. Okay. At this point in the night, obviously. Uh, and what is she wearing? Uh, she's still wearing her Winnie the Pooh pajamas as she was when I had come down earlier. Okay. And I, all I could see was that he had pushed her back onto the couch. And she Who kept pushed her? Number two. Okay. He was pushing her back onto the couch. And she, she kept saying, where's my purse? Where's my purse? And the guy kept telling her to sit down. And I didn't want my mom to get hurt. How many times does she get up and get pushed back down? I'd say she got up twice. And, she, and then they told it. The first time she stepped back and sat down, but the second time she was pushed back onto the couch. This is only by number two? Yes, because number one was standing behind me. Is he saying anything during this process? He keeps uttering that we have to hurry up. It's taking too long. And that's at that point. That's like he kept saying, "Hurry up! It's taking too long." Is there any other demands from either two or three or two. one about uh, uh, about wallet or purse? Is there any other? Two was the one talking to my father, t asking about his wallet. And number one, and he kept saying, where's the rest of the money? And where's the purse was coming from number one. Number one? Yeah. Behind you? Yes. I thought... But number, number two didn't speak. Okay, well, you just said number two is the one who's making demands of... No, the he's one. the one looking. Okay. He's the one looking. So number two, as we... We're stepping back to, because I don't want to confuse this thing. I want okay. to slow it I'm down. Sorry. No, I'm no, just... no, no. Don't be sorry. We're just going to slow it down. Okay, you're you're getting agitated and 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 um, you're anxious. So we're going to slow things down again because it's very important in this area, right? As you had said, that number two talks to your mom and says, "Where's your purse?" Okay, and I? pushes her down. So now you said that number two okay. didn't speak. So let's clarify that. Okay. What I meant was number one had asked her where her purse was, and she was mumbling. Where's my purse? And number two was the one that pushed her. So your number number one is talking to your mom from behind you. Yes. Okay. Where's your purse? Where's your purse? Yes. She gets up. And number two? Number two steps forward. And that's when my mom steps back and sits down. <sighs> Has number two uttered a word at this point in time? I can't remember hearing him. Okay. So we're just correcting what you said earlier because you said earlier that it was number two who was asking where the purse is, what are the purse is, and now you've said now it's number one guy who would I'm initially... Sorry, it's just... No, no, no. It's all a purpose. Uh, the purpose here is clarifying what you're saying. So number I one is... I just don't want to... Number one is the one who's doing the talking about the purse. Number three is focused on your dad's wall. Okay. Number two pushes your mom back into place, into the seat. Now, at this point in time, can you see number two? Can you see his description? At this point in time, all I could see is a hoodie and slim build. A hoodie and slim build. Do you see a gun on him? I'm on the floor. I can't see what, like, what his hands were doing. When you say you're on the floor, how are you on the floor? How are you, what are you, how, what's your position? Are you lying on the floor? Are you sitting on the floor? I'm sitting on the floor, cross-legged, when with uh, number one behind me. Okay. 
So you've now um, you've now got your dad, uh, like who's told him about the wallet upstairs, was sixty dollars. You got your mom, who's they're asking about a purse from number one. Let's go from there. How is your mom dealing with this when she's getting up and getting pushed back down? Is she responding to them? Is she talking to them? She keeps saying, because they keep uttering, if you cooperate, no one will get hurt. And she keeps asking herself, where's my purse? Where's my purse? In English. And then I believe she remembers that she didn't take a purse out. She only had a wallet that day. After she came home, she had a wallet. She was trying to find it. And number two was looking around for it. Was she up helping to look for it? That The second time, that's when she st stood up to help, and that's when she got pushed back down. Okay. Are they bound? Do you see their hands or? My mother, when she got up, I, she was not bound. Okay. So do they direct number two to where this per, where the wallet is? Or does he find it that you know? I don't know. Okay. So then what happens? And then number one tells me to stand up. And because I'm crossing on the floor, I, with my hands behind my back, I couldn't get up very well. And so he kind of, he with one hand, he kind of like, pulled me up. And he said, come here. He didn't say who or what. He just said, come here. And he brought me upstairs and he said, you're going to take me to the wallet. Show me where your father's wallet, where does he keep his wallet? And at this point, number two had come upstairs. And since he was upstairs. I'm just turning this off because it's going. Number two, sorry. So let's start there. Hang on a second again. Come with me. Come with me. He, they take me to my parents' room. And I can see the bed is turned over and everything's awry. And you're with. Um, number one is still behind me. Yes. And number two at that point is on his way up. Okay, so he's not up there yet. Okay. Do you hear any interaction going on between your parents and number three? Can you hear anything? I don't recall anything. Okay, so you get to the top of the stairs. And he takes me to my parents' room. Where are you standing? At first I was standing at the doorway, like in the middle of the doorway, and then he pushed me aside to my left a little so that number two can come in. Okay, you get a good look at number two now of what he's wearing? All I could tell was he had a vest and his face was like a long oval face. He had a vest? No, hoodie. Okay. A dark hoodie. Okay, and was there anything on his face or was there, could you see his face? Again, he kept telling me to keep my head down and every time I tried to, he used his hand and he, because he had me by my shoulder, he kind of just let go for a second, pushed my head down to make sure I wouldn't look up. Okay. Is the, where, you know, what the light, what are the lights you said in the hallway upstairs were on? on? Are they on still? Yes. Okay. When you're looking down, can you see what number one is wearing on his pants or his shoes? He was not directly behind me and I was, there was just so much in front of me that had happened and I don't recall. Okay. So... Where are you facing, if you're at the doorway, facing when you're forward. looking in, are the lights to your mom and dad's room on? Are you now facing into the room? And what do you see? You said you saw the bed turned up, so it turned. So the room has been rummaged through, is, is, is what you're, is that the state of your parents' room? No. Okay. It was, it, it, like they had flipped the bed. Okay. And when you say you moved to the left, are you still able to look inside the bedroom? Where do they have you look? Where are you looking now? Almost like I'm right beside the wall and my parents have a, my mother has a, a sewing table there. Okay. 
So I'm just pretty much staring at, I'm like looking down at the table. And peripherals you can't see where, where? He's, no. And where is number one at this point? He's the, still behind me. Okay. So what's going on inside the room with number two now in there? He's looking for my parents, my father's jeans, and he's asking me where is it. But I don't know where it is because they had turned the room around. And okay. then number one pulled me backwards and told me to sit at the top of the banister and tied my hands back, uh, tied my arm to the banister. Okay, now, did, did you see them recover anything inside your mom and dad's room? I did not see anything, no. Are you sure? Because uh, we would, when we spoke the last time, there was some mention of some other money that went missing. There are, uh, yes, the U.S. currency. So how did that get found? I believe when they were looking for my father's wallet, they had opened the drawer. And there was, a, it was in an envelope. What drawer would that have been in? On my, on the, if you're in, at the doorway where I was standing, on the left side, the bedside table. Whose side of the bed is it? That's my mother's side of the bed. Okay. And approximately how much money? I'm not sure how much she took out for our, our trip. But I can, o I can only estimate about a few hundred dollars few hundred because at the time the last time or you told me you were pretty adamant 1, about, about eleven hundred dollars so I'm curious to know how you came up with that number I believe because when we were at the border we and we stopped at the duty-free my mother was deciding whether to use her US currency or her uh, her US currency or her Canadian currency so it was at that time you remember hearing eleven $1 hundred dollars, and that's what is that the inference you're saying is that because you're pretty solid, saying that it was eleven $1 hundred dollars that went missing that was was taken, and that you saw it when we spoke, and who took it, who took possession of the money. I'm sorry. It's, it's all right. Were you ever inside the room? Did they ever take you inside the room? Did you ever make it past the threshold of that door? Okay, so let's come back to now. You're being taken to the, the banister in the I'm upper sorry, room. I don't, don't apologize, okay? I'm going to try and ask you questions to try and clarify points. Okay, if you don't remember, you don't remember. Okay, so don't, there's no apologizing. The only reason you would apologize to me is if you've lied to me. No. Okay, no, so just, just, then in this case, then don't apologize to me. It's okay. Okay, I'm going to ask you questions to clarify points. Okay. So you're at the, you've been taken back to the banister. Who is there? Number one took me back. Okay, where's number two? He was still in the bedroom. Okay. How do you get tied to this banister? He, number one, number two had come out of, come out of the room, and he had told number two, go get Cuzzy for the string, uh, no, it was, go get Cuz. He has said that, I need the string, go get Cuz. And number two ran down the stairs and he came back up shortly after. And then,
And I believe number two was the one that tied me up. Because number one was still holding the gun in front of me. So number one is now in front of you? He has been in front of me since he pulled me out of the bedroom. Okay. And he sat me down and he was in front of me, making sure I was down. So on this gun that you're looking at that's in front of you, is there, can you see what type of gun is it? Does it have a cylinder or round thing like an old gun or does it look like more? It, like, uh, it just reminded me of the, like, television police, like the handguns. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it's black. Can you see from there, now you're in front of him and you're looking down, can you see his shoes? Can you see anything else about him? I want you to think right now, just try to... It's tough to put yourself back in that spot, but you've never been tied up, I suspect, or bound like that, and now you're sitting there staring down. Can you, is there anything that you remember about his shoes? Or his pants? Any idea where this string came from? Does it, does it, well, you're, you're seeing it come around because it's now lit. Does it look like it's come from some, from clothing or from shoes that you might have in your house? Or you don't know? It just, it just looked like a black shoelace. I. Okay. Any, any interaction, any communication going on between you and number one and, and number two while this is being, while you're being bound? My mother's calling for me. Okay. And they keep saying that to shut up. Who's saying that to who? Number three is downstairs and she's telling her to shut up. She's telling her to shut up. What's your dad doing? I can't hear my father. Okay. <clears throat> You're now bound to this, to the, to the railing. Can you show me, can you stand up and turn around and tell me, just show on the camera, how your hands are bound and how you are against the railing. You don't have to sit down, I just need to see how you were. Just tell me. The only reason that I'm trying to, I, I need to do this is that I'm also gonna ask you is that it, so take this back to from, Take it out of a traumatizing event, which it is, and put, put yourself into a more clinical position because I want to see how you could physically get your phone out of your waistband. We're obviously going to need to know that. It's very important. So traumatize away, away now put yourself into a just a state of I need to man mechanically show how I can get access to my phone, okay? Because that's obviously very relevant. I, we know you made the phone call. But questions are going to obviously raise is that if my hands are bound and I'm against the railing, how do I talk to a 911 operator? Okay? So clinically, this is now a clinical demonstration. Just stand up, focus in on how you did it. And I want you to stick that in your waistband as an example. Okay, so take your, just take your sweat off, because this will be a very smooth, very quick thing. It's a one-time demonstration. I'm not going to ask you to repeat it, but I need to go through it, okay? So just take your sweater off. Stand up and turn around. Put this in the side that you believe it was in. Great. Turn around. So that only you're looking away from me. You're looking exactly like now. Here is where the banister is. Put your hands back behind your back, exactly how you remember they were. Okay. Now, and the, you're, are you restrained from movement? How far can you move your hands from the banister? They tied my upper arm. Yes. Around the banister. Yes. But my hands were bound together. So your hands bound together, and this is the arm that's the, the strings wrapped around against the banister. Okay, so now how can you get to the phone? And how do you make the phone call? 911. Mm -hmm. And do you talk down like that? Yes, I'm yelling at the phone like this. And how can you hear? I turn the volume on max. Yes. So that's exactly the way that you're talking to her against the railing. Okay, that's good enough. Sit down. Put your sweater back on. Just put your sweater on. Yeah, yeah. 
You want it? You want some more water? I'm okay. Okay. I really appreciate that. Obviously, it's very important to see it because we can't put you. It would be absolutely physically impossible to put you back into the same position. But we just needed to see how you get the phone out and and make the call. Okay, so sit back, take a couple of deep breaths again. When you're, when you're up against the railing and now you've been bound, and is number two and number one still there, or are they gone? Number one was there for a little bit, number two ran down the stairs. What is number one's, is he saying anything to you? He's saying, you obeyed, and just shut up, and don't move. And he continues yelling downstairs, hurry up. Hurry up, it's taking too long, hurry up. Now tell me something, okay, which is kind of important. There's a safe in the house, is there not? Safe is in a fairly visible place within within your parents' bedroom, is it not? It's inside their closet. Fairly visible, according, at least from the pictures. Was there ever mention of wanting the combination to that safe? Through any of the interaction of one, two, and three, did they know that there was a safe in place? I don't, I, I'm not aware if they knew. Okay. I didn't. So you never heard any of them demanding the safe, the, 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 um, the combination to the safe? Was there anything else they were demanding in their yell yelling? It was, was it, was it, what was the focus of what they were looking for? Cash. Cash. Okay. So number one's talking to you, you obeyed, and we need to go, we need to go. And where does he go from that point in time? He's yelling down the stairs, is there more? And number two, I can just hear him muffling something. I, I don't hear him cl clearly. Number two or number three? No, sorry, number three. Number okay. three. I'm sorry. Number three. Okay. It's just a murr, but I can't, I can't hear what he's saying. Okay. At this point, I start hearing my parents get up. And they're moving. And my mom's yelling, where's my daughter? I want my daughter. Where's my daughter? And I'm yelling, Mom, I'm here. Are they saying anything to your parents? I know she's yelling to you. OK, she's, she's yelling to you. Are they saying anything? Like, are they giving them directions as to where they're going? Or can you remember? Probably can you use my mom right now. Okay. So you hear them get up and you're moving, and they're moving to in what direction? Towards the basement. Okay. Are you still hearing one and two, or one and three? Are you hearing all three of them? Number one. And what's he saying? Hurry up. Is there more? Okay. At this point, he throws my glasses. 
Then he walks down the stairs. So he's still up there with you. When do you, and, and at this, so you've had your glasses on the whole time. When does he take them off? Right before he leaves. Right after, so you're, you're tied to the banister. You're just before he leaves to go down the stairs, your glasses are off. You have had your glasses on the whole time prior to that. Okay. So now you hear your parents up and they're moving towards the basement. Do you hear, what do you hear? Where's the rest of the money? Whose voice? The one with the Caribbean accent. Number three, who we've called number three. Yes. Where's the rest of the money? Is that as, you're, as you hear your parents moving? I can hear them stepping down the stairs. Okay. And then after number one joins them, after he took my glasses. You heard him go down the stairs as well? Number one then left me. Yes. And he went down the stairs. And I asked, my mom was still calling for me, and I wanted to go, and he says no. Okay, hang on a second. Hang on. So number, you hear number one say no to your response, to your demand of wanting to go. Do you hear the questions coming, or your mom saying, where is she, where is she? Are she starting to make her, are they starting to go down to the basement? Are they on the stairs leading to the basement? Can you hear, I'm, I'm going to ask you to focus in, because it's very difficult, I'm going to ask you to focus in, are you hearing all of them going downstairs? Can you hear the, that many footsteps? That's five sets of steps. Because if your mom is moving down to the basement with these guys and number one is walking down to join them, he would be, he would be later. He would, he would be walking down. Does he go down to the basement? Or do you know? Can't tell? Here, Jennifer, take a Kleenex and, and just take a minute. Okay, so we're now down in the basement. They're down in the, you know your parents are down in the basement. You don't know who's down there with them. You can't tell how many people went down. You know that number one left and was heading in, down in that direction, but you don't know if, by footsteps who's down there. That's all right. Whose voices can you hear now down in the basement? I can just remember number three saying you lied. There's more. Where is it? You lied. You're lying. Okay, and then what do you hear? I hear, I heard pop, and then my mom, I heard her squeal. So do you hear one pop, or do you hear two? That's what I can't remember. Then don't, it's, it's one or two? Okay, and then you hear your mom squeal. And then what do you hear? Another one or two pops. Do you hear any voices in between other than your mom squealing? Do you hear number three say anything? All I can remember was like calling for her. Okay. Don't apologize, okay? This is nothing to feel to apologize to me for. This is something that you're trying to remember. So you heard a pop, you heard your mom squeal, and then you heard another. Any idea how many more pops you heard? 
I just remember that I heard one or two and then there was a slight break and there was one more. I don't remember if it was two and then break and then one or if it was one and then break and then one. Okay. So you're saying that you heard a total of how many pops? Guessing. Four or five. Four or five. Okay, so you hear, uh, after those pops, popping noises, what do you hear? After the last popping noise you've heard, what do you hear? That's it. It's too long, let's go. From number one. That's it? It's too long, let's go? Okay. And then I just hear a bunch of foots going. <clears throat> Does it sound like they're obviously coming, does it sound coming up the stairs? Do you know where they leave? I, I believe they went out the front door. Okay. But I couldn't see anything. I just, okay. It's what I heard. It's what you're hearing. What else do you hear next? That I heard. Once the door closed, I heard my father. He ran up the stairs and all I could hear was moaning. Yeah. Once I heard him starting to move, I that's when I pulled out the phone and I was trying to call 911. Okay. Did you hear, after you hear, that's it, let's go, do you hear any more communication between the three guys? Okay. I just, I was just calling for my mom. Okay, so you're dialing 911, you've called the police, you know, you're on the phone with the dispatcher, you're updating them as to what goes on. Yeah, my, I hear my dad calling out the door and he's like yelling on the street. Okay. And I'm calling for him, but this dispatch lady I'm trying to so when the officers arrive how do you get untied Do you remember? At first, they were all outside, and I, I was screaming for them. Yeah. And finally, someone heard me, and they came up the stairs. First, they had to check all the rooms first, but I just wanted them to get me out. Yeah. I didn't want to be sitting there anymore. So they, how did they get you free? They grabbed a pair of scissors from my room. But the officer said to wait a few minutes because he didn't know how to, how to do it, the procedure. But I just wanted to get out. Think it was you, my dad. He cut me, he let me go, but he, he cut, he cut the, now you, uh, when you took out, you off your sweater to show me the demonstration, there's still some marks on your arm. Are those the marks from the string? No? Where are they from? From before. Okay. So history-wise, we'll go into that, okay? So, now, as an event, as to try and see, this is the, uh, the, little episode, the little technique that we use to try and see if there's something during the course of what you've told me that 
boom, I trigger something, uh, another memory, okay? We're going to start right now. We're going to start at the point that you're being, you're, the officers arrive, okay? And we're going backwards. Not nearly as, I don't need you to go into the, we're not going to be stopping here and going through to, well, what about this and what about this? It's you may come across something. It's the re reverse chronology of what you just described, okay? Leading us back to the time you're in upstairs talking to Edward. So I want you to start right now with your police officers arrive and they're cutting you free. And now let's start going backwards from that. Okay. I just don't want to say wrong things. Mm. So I'm just don't. This is. Don't worry about saying wrong things because you'll be cl you'll be correcting them as you're moving moving backwards. Okay. It's a very well practiced technique to help in memories. So especially in traumatic events. So my dad was. He had been out the door. Yes. And he was moaning. And just before that, they had left. The, the, the people had left. Number one had said, it's been too long, let's go. Before that was a gunshot. Before that, they were scolding my dad for lying because there, there was more money and he wasn't telling them where it was. <sighs> Before that, They were going down. You're doing great. Okay, you're doing great. Just before that, they were going down the stairs. But I could just hear my parents' footsteps and my mom. So I don't know how many of them went down. But I know for sure number one was upstairs with me while they were starting to go down. And then number one, that's when, like, he was taking off my glasses and that's when he went down the stairs. Am I saying something? Before that, they tied me. Before that, number two was upstairs as well. And he was helping number one tie me, the banister. 
Before that, number one turned to number two and said, go get, I need, get me the string, go get cuz. That's when number two went down the stairs and came back up with the string. Before that, number one had taken me and told me to sit down at the top of the stairs. Number two was still in the bedroom. Before that, we were in my parents' room, and he was asking me about the wallet. Where's my dad's wallet? got the money. Don't worry about it. Keep going. I don't remember how they got the money. Before that, I was downstairs. And they were looking for my mom's purse. Number three was asking about the wallet. Number two was looking for my mom's purse. My mom kept standing up and sitting down. And they pushed her. Number... For that, I was in my room. That's when he tied me up. But before that, I showed him the money. Before that, I had heard them toss my parents' room, and that's when I looked out. No, the guy went down the stairs, and then I looked out. That's when he came, and he pulled out his gun and told me to sit on my bed. Before that, I heard my mom tell my dad to come downstairs. And that's when I told Ed I'd call him back and put my phone my phone in my back. Is that okay? Yes. When you said um, that you saw during this process, you, you heard the steps of the guy, someone going downstairs, did you hear your father going down the stairs? At ever? At that point in time? I heard him get out of his room. But then that's when I was telling Ed that I'd call him back. He was responding to your mom's command? Yes. Okay. In your kitchen, there is uh, rear sliding doors. 
Is there not? In your in the back area to get out to the back of your house? Is it sliding do glass doors? Yes. How is that normally? How do you what is the normal position of of the blinds or or whatever when you it, it, during the day? Do you keep them covered or are they exposed? Can you easily have access to get out to the backyard or do you have to open them? Like how is the normal routine? It differs from it differs from time of day and time of year. Um, my mom my mother likes to plant, so in the daytime we have our blinds open. Um, they're all the way out, but they're open to let sunlight in. And at night we close them because of our backyard neighbors. Okay. The sliding glass door, is it locked all the time? Occasionally it's forgotten to be locked. But for the most part we do check it before we go to bed. Before everybody, the last person is supposed to check everything before turning in. But on some occasions, it's how do you know that it's been unlocked? When my mother goes out to water the plants the next morning, it's open. And she makes a comment about that? She comments to my father that he had forgotten when he went out to water his grass and the night before. What about your front door? How do you, what is that when you guys are home or when you guys are home in the house, do you lock your front door or do you keep it? or do you keep it all unlocked? Occasionally it's left unlocked because the way our family is, we have family that come over after dinner. So sometimes we leave the door unlocked, but it will always be locked before bed. The last person going into bed. The last person always locks it? Yes. And you said something about Sorry. activates the alarm as well? Um, we activate the alarm before we go, well, we leave the house. So there's, it's not activated when you're in the house and you're going to bed. It's only when there's no one in the house. Yes. Um, when was the last time that you went out through the back, the back sliding glass doors that you remember? A while, I'd say. The only time I go back there is if I'm barbecuing. Um, the occasion my mom needs help carrying a if she needs help carrying something heavy. Okay. What about a stranger's knock on your door? Whoever's downstairs normally goes to answer the door. Will they look out or will they just open the door? No, uh, they tried to look through the sheerness of our curtain. Would you, have you ever heard your mom or dad, like if there's someone at the door who they don't recognize to go away and they won't open the door? Or will they always open the door to find out who, even if they don't recognize someone? Well, they try to go as quietly as possible and if they don't, like a telemarketer or something, they just walk away. Okay. So, I think we've. If there's something else that I can that all that pops into my head while or, or when I go out to talk to them later, if there's something else that they want to ask me, I'll come back to it. What I want to do now is I want to go into your past, okay. And start talking about things that have been going on with you. In, in in relation to your life, okay. You know, not I'm not going back to childhood. That's not my interest. Is uh, obviously in the last few years is what's going on. Do you have a boyfriend? I had a boyfriend, but no, I don't have one. What what's your what your, what was your boyfriend's name? Daniel. Daniel what? Wong. Tell me about your relationship with you and Daniel. 
it was a really tough one. Um, we went to high school together. He helped me through a really difficult time in high school um, when I have asthma, but it it wasn't a concern. Uh, it was only a concern when I was younger. Um, but when I went over to Europe, um, a lot of sick people were smoking cigarettes and it acted up over there and he took care of me over there. When did you go to Europe? 2003. Okay, and how long were you there for? Under two weeks, I think. Okay. So this is 2003 when you and Danny were started dating? No, uh, later on in 2003. We were just friends at that point. Okay. What grade were you in at that point? Eleven. Eleven. So how does your relationship with Danny can, uh, develop? Where, where does it go and how long does it last? It lasted about six years. Um, it began in the summer of 2003, before my grade 12 year. Uh, we were just really good friends and I guess it just happened. Like we just started going out. Well, saying that we were going out, but um, I didn't really get to see him much. Let's talk about that. Why didn't you get the chance to see him much? I wasn't allowed to have a boyfriend. And that was when you were 18? I was 17. 17 turning in your 18th year? Maybe mm, grade I 11 just, or going to, grade, grade, no, going grade. to grade 12. Okay. And uh, so who was against you having a boyfriend? My father. Your father? How was your mother in this? She took a back seat to his opinion. Um, she would tell me that I gotta find someone who was devoted to me. But at that time, she just, my father was the one that enforced the rules. And what were the issues your father had with a boyfriend? Was it Danny in particular, or, Dan or was it just no, a boy? Just any boy at okay. that point. So what happens? How, how are you saying that you're not allowed to see this? What, what uh, I, know, I know that there's certain ways that you can still get around your father not allowing you to see it. When in grade 12, uh, we went to school together. He transferred out, um, but he'd come over. Uh, to our original high school and he'd come see me okay and once in a while I'd go and skip class and go see him so you were seeing you were dating him essentially without your parents knowledge and consent yes what would they have done to you if they found out and did they find out not in high school no. okay so you finish high school and then what do you do when you finish high school I was, I wanted to do kinesiology, but my my father was very adamant on doing something in the medical field that was a little bit more, um, in his opinion, more like a more successful. I guess you can say um, he knew I didn't have the stomach for being a doctor, um, so he wanted me to become a pharmacist. Okay. Did you go to school for pharmacy? Did you get any university for pharmacy? So if you're be, you finish your grade 12, you go to OI, your OIC year? Like grade 12 is you finish your OIC year. I don't have OIC. I didn't have OIC. I finished my grade 12. And then where, where do you, what do you do for the next few years? While your dad's wanting you to get into the medical field, what do you do? I was trying to get into piano. What school? I I was still taking classes at a conservat like a a school, but it's still recognized in the community as a teacher's license through the Royal Conservatory. Yes. Okay, so how is this interaction? How is this going with your dad? How is the how is your home life with the you're not now not living up to his expectations? He you didn't know I lied to him. What did you lie to him? What did you tell him? That I was going to school. For. Uh, for just pre-med, uh, not pre-med, sorry, science. For science. Bachelor of Science. You would have had bills for school. How is, how is that coming up? How are these bills being paid for for university that you weren't going to? I was working at Eastside Mario's and I took care of myself. So like he... Financially, my father was never, 
he never took hand in bills. So he didn't know anything about pills. Did your mom know that you weren't going to university? No. So both your parents thought you had gone to university? Yes. Okay. And um, how long did that, how long, did they still to this point in time think that you had gone to university for, for, pharmacy, for sciences? Yes. And how did you feel about that? How did you feel about having to lie to your parents? I felt guilty, but every time I tried to bring it up, there was just so much, so much expectation. Did you have any resentment towards them for this? I chose what I chose, um, but in the end I chose my family. Okay, so now you're not allowed to see boys. How do you continue really your relationship while you're supposed to be at university working at Eastside Mario's? Are you working during the day at Eastside Mario's? Um, sometimes, but not all the time. So how do, how do you maintain this relationship with, uh, with Daniel? Um, I'd bus down to see him, or my parents would drive me down to Toronto, and they thought I was getting going to school, but I'd go see him and I'd come back. What school did they think you're going to? Ryerson. Okay. Um, was Daniel aware of what was going on in, in your with the issues in your life with your parents? Not at first, but eventually he found out. Okay. And. Um, what would your parents do f find out? Did they ever find out that you were dating Danny, Daniel? Eventually. Well, how long into the relationship was that? I'd say five years. Five years. So that brings you up to 2008 or 2009? 2008. 2007, 2008. And how do they find out? My mother saw him dropping me off at, a loca at Pacific Mall where they come to pick me up. And how did that go over? Not well. Explain to me what not well means. My mother, she said at first she was like not supportive, but she said, you need to tell me. And she basically gave me the um, the sex talk, which basically was one moment could ruin your entire life. Um, but once my father found out, without even knowing him, he automatically put judgment. What kind of judgment did your father pass on him? He blamed my lying and even racial um, profiling on him. And what does that mean? I don't know about the racial profile. Um, he is half Filipino, half Chinese. Yes. And my father associated him with Filipino and said that, you know, he wasn't a good match for me. He wasn't going anywhere in life and um, that he wouldn't be able to support a family. So tell me about, about Daniel. Uh, we've interviewed Daniel, okay? So tell me about Daniel.
He was, I believe, uh, selling. Selling? Selling some marijuana, I believe. Okay. You weren't aware that he was up to this type of business? No. Is that what you're Is that what you're saying to me? Yes. So, um, when he is, when your parents find out, uh, what happens to you at home? They pretty much uh, make sure that I wouldn't contact him again. And how do they do that? They take away my cell phone and restrict internet access. Like, they have to be in the room or not at all. Do you have a curfew? If I go out with a friend that they know, I have to be home before 9. Before 9 o'clock? Yes. And is that even up until Monday? Did you have a curfew up until Monday? Uh, technically, but I don't. I haven't gone out for a while. And why is it that you haven't gone out for a while? Because they gave me an ultimatum to either choose Daniel or to choose them about a year and a half ago, or two about a year and a half ago, and I chose to stay home with my family. But even though he had moved on, I uh, we still wanted to be friends. Um, we went through a lot. I was there for him and he was there for me when we needed each other. So I, whenever I could, I would sneak a phone call here, a sneak a phone call there. Um, I'd ask a friend of mine to pick me up and to take me to see him and then take me back. Who is that friend? Uh, Gary. L Gary? Gary Gibson. Gibson. Uh, I met Gary through Daniel, and uh, he he picked me up and took me to see Daniel, and he made sure I got home afterwards. So tell me about uh, how come your parents allow you to speak to Edward or to Adrian, in fact, allow Adrian into the house? Adrian has been a friend of mine since the uh, beginning of high school. Um, he... My parents agree with his, how do I explain this? He went to school for engineering. Um, he has a job and his mother was, is a piano teacher as well, like myself. So in their eyes, uh, he had like a well, a well-rounded life. And because he didn't, he took me out once, like once, in a while but not really but because he he has a car of his own so he comes over therefore they were able to interact with him and accepted him okay what about Edward um, Edward was an old co-worker of mine um, Edward only met my mom once at a gym at when well, we went to the gym um, I introduced him to my mom but uh, he he only stops by when my parents are not home for about like an hour or so just mm. to catch up, but I haven't gone out to actually like, we talk on the phone, but that's pretty much, I tried to meet him at the gym, but that's all. So for the last year and a half since you chose, the ultimatum was given to you, as you, in your words, it's either Daniel and or your family. Yes. And you say that you chose your family and you stayed home. What have you been, when, when you say I stayed home, what is your routine? Tell me for the last year and a half, what, what have you been doing? I have been continuing my piano studies and my parents um, enrolled me back into school, into and college. Into college. At first I didn't have enough marks to get into the program I wanted, so I had to do one year of, uh, like, refresh a course of a calculus high school credit. And they never said to you, you can get in and graduate with a, a science degree, but you can't take that and now get in. They never question you about college now that you can't, you don't have the marks to get into college. How did you get around that? I lied to them and said that calculus wasn't a big thing when I first applied uh, when science, but now calculus is more of a mandatory course. What, um, and when was this happening that you were going back to school? Uh, recent, uh, I went back last summer. 
What's which college? And I went to high school. Yes. From a school program. Um, it was at Bray. I believe it's Bray Buff. Bray Buff. Um, on Steels and Bayview. And you graduated with that? You're, you've you've no, finished. I, fi I completed the credit uh, at upgrading my mark. And have you? Did you apply to college? Yes. And you were accepted. I was accepted for January. Yes. At which college? Uh, Centennial College. Okay. In what program? Uh, bio, bio, technology, biotechnology engineering. Okay. So, the last year and a half, you've been doing your piano studies. Yes. What is your routine, like daily routine for the last year and a half when you say that I chose my family and I chose to stay home? Well, at first, I continued phone contact with Daniel. But uh, that only lasted about um, one time. I, like I told you, Gary came to pick me up to go see Daniel, and I got caught. And um, that's when they took away my cell phone, and they said that they'd drive me places. And so pretty much I wake up, I do my piano studies. Um, I may go see my teacher for lessons. Um, at first they took me, but then uh, once my teacher was like, yeah, she's with me, um, I was able to go and see him at his house um, once a week. Uh, sometimes it was once every other week if he was busy. And then I had um, another studies at a place called Euro Music for the actual pedagogy course, which is the actual teaching course. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went to those two classes once a week as well. Um, and pretty much it was home, help out with housework, and practice my piano, and just wait for the college application, uh, uh, college acceptance. And did you go out? Were you allowed to go out at night? I don't go out, no. The only time I went out was... Uh, last time I went out was for my... For my one month, uh, my um, my birthday, and I was able uh, a week ago to go see my friend on Hall on the night of Halloween. My mom went out um, to a dance uh, dance thing. Sorry, it was Saturday night, not Halloween night. But it was Halloween weekend. Saturday night, um, my friend Topaz and I had made plans, but my grandfather we wanted to go skating because I love to skate, and since they know Topaz and they like they confirmed that she was in fact going with me to skating and they have her number to call her to make sure I was there um, and that I'd call when I got to her house mm -hmm. um, I got there and because I had let my friends know that my grandfather was ill and that I wasn't a hundred percent sure she did she has a child so she couldn't make plans to get uh, her child a babysitter so we just stayed at her house with her husband for about, um, it was definitely an hour, and then... This other phone that Danny, that Daniel gets to you, yes. how long do you, are you able to keep that from your parents' attention? Yes. And how long are you in, how long do you have that phone? I mean, three months. You've had it for three months? The last three months? Three, two months. And when do you switch from just using the phone to just pulling the SIM card and using it? The just SIM? using SIM, pulling the SIM card, texting him, and then taking it back, putting it back in my jacket pocket. Okay, so this SIM card that you say was in your jacket pocket, which jacket is it that you're talking about? Um, I have a black jacket with a furry hood yes. that I use in the fall. And the last time you knew about it, it was inside that jacket? jacket. Yes. And you believe, you would believe there's no reason why it wouldn't still be there? Yes. Okay. And where would that jacket be located? Either hanging in my room or hanging uh, behind, uh, by the garage, the door. Mudroom area, what we call the mudroom area, the garage door. Is it a laundry room where there's where you come in from the garage? Yeah. Okay. And not a laundry room, but uh, it's like a little nook. Little nook. There's no the laundry is downstairs. We, we took the laundry downstairs. Okay. Um, Danny, Danny, and and um, his 
activities, his, his drug-related activities. Did you ever engage or assist him in this, in this practice? No. I told him I did not want anything to do with it. Um, it's a tough question, right? Is that are you involved in any type of illegal activity that would draw the attention of these type of people to come to your house looking for something? I have never. What about your parents? Not to my knowledge. Well, not to your knowledge. Like, are your parents, is there any source of money coming into your house that is unaccounted for? No. Would it be something that your parents would engage in uh, gambling or not illegal money. or illegal drug activity? No. Well, not, I help my mother with all the bills and everything and nothing, she never does it have like, anything. How new was that basement? Like the setup of the basement? Graduated in 2004. We moved in in 2004. I believe we moved in for about a year. So I'd say either 2005 or 2006. They moved it? You guys we moved renovated. in there? They no, renovated. we renovated. Renovated? Yes. And, um, and at that time the basement was completed? Yes. Were your parents working at both at that time? When we first moved in in 2004, my father was an employee. Uh, he had got laid off from Magna. Yep. My mother had transferred up to a place in Newmarket. Um, then my father found the job at uh, where he's, he was currently working at uh, Kobe and Stell. And then I forgot the year. My mother got laid off, I believe in 2008 or so, and she's been looking for a job and been at home. Now, um, after talking to Daniel, and when's the last time you, you, you text message or communicated with him? It was when my grandfather was ill. Have you, have you been experiencing anything, what you would call in the last little while of any type of threats or threatening behavior? Yes. Tell me about that. Um, his, I don't, well he says it's just a friend, but everyone says it's his girlfriend. Um, she has messaged me telling me to back off, to leave Daniel alone, and He's messaged me and he's like, is that you calling? But I wasn't calling. Or I'd be on the phone with him and he's like, your other, uh, my Rogers line, because I called him on the the phone that he gave me. Yes. And he'd say that my Rogers line was calling him. And when I looked into it, it was like on the on my bills, those phone calls were made, but I know I didn't make them. So I, w I couldn't explain it. And I did get uh, a letter in the mail saying that uh, you're a dead person walking. Now, why didn't you tell me about that last when I spoke to you the other day? I, everything had just happened. I wasn't. It was it just simply a letter? Yes, it was uh, cut out. Where is that letter? It's garbage in the garbage? Yes. I didn't think too much of it at that time. And what did you equate it to? Just jealousy. You still are equating it to the, f the friend or the girlfriend? Well, I don't want to, like, I don't know 100%, so I don't want to point fingers. Why, so if you're not 100% and you don't want to point fingers, why do you believe it's her? Because she has personally messaged me on Facebook telling me that I'm stupid and to back off and to leave Daniel alone. Okay. And sometimes when I text him, um, she texts me using his phone telling me that he's with his girlfriend Christine and to leave him alone. The, um, is there something that happened to you? that you never disclosed to the police before? Um, 
that is something I lied to him about. Okay, tell me about that. Um, I told him I was raped, but I was just very depressed and Sorry, this is very embarrassing. Um, don't, don't, you haven't reported it to the police, right? This is a, this is an interaction between you and an ex-boyfriend, okay? So you're, you're not in any trouble for this, and it's important that we clear it up because he's telling us stuff, yes. and then we're, we're coming back to you, so. Yes, but this is something I lied to him about. Okay. Um, and why did, and you say you were depressed, and, and when did this happen? When did this, when did you tell him about this? Maybe a year ago. A year ago. And what was it that you told him? That um, someone came to the door, and when I went to open the door, uh, they pushed me down and raped me. Did they? Did you give descriptions? Did you provide descriptions to them about it? To him about it? I might have. I, I don't remember exactly what I said. Okay. Um, but you're telling I, me to my face that this never happened. This never happened. Okay, so it's not, this isn't something that we need to be looking at as something that's tied to this. No, this is, that was my lie to him. Okay. For attention, is it? Now, did he, what did he, what was his reaction to that? Report it. But it wasn't real, so I didn't report it. Okay. Now, um... Would, did, Dan, did you ever would did you ever have a, have a figure if Danny if Daniel stopped being a drug dealer or engaged in, or is he still dealing with that again this is not criminal it's more in lines of you know what would link someone to think that they're coming to your house for a large quantity for money which is I, an obvious question I don't I've asked him what he's up to and he just says running like doing runs but I don't ask him into detail. So when he says he's doing runs, you're equating that to he's running, still running drugs? Running errands, running drugs, seeing people, I... You just didn't ask him? I just kind of went blind ear because I'm not with him. Okay. Did you ever receive, um, again, coming from, we're going to ask it, did you ever receive any other type of threatening text messages that, that you know, more than just words of what a person says, uh, you know, don't see him or don't. Did you ever re receive anything that was threatening? You know, yeah. I did get um, some, but I couldn't. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It said that we have people that can erase this message, um, but it was just words. It was just, just stay away. What were the words? Just stay away. Stay away, Chris, Chrissy and Danico, one, one life, one destiny or something like that. So it was more in line with Danny and this, more in line with the just relationship. Just pretty much just leave, like, for me to stay away. There was never any threat to, uh, threat to you uh, uh, from any other anonymous, re it always seems to you to have the air of Danny's girlfriend or friend that's sending these threats. Just... He says that it's not her, but from the, all the messages are pretty much just to leave him alone so he can be happy. Okay. But there's no, uh, there's no phone number that these things are coming back from? No. Being sent from? No. Um, did you like, ever... I know it's absurd, but I couldn't explain it. No, I, well, I don't... I, I, uh, with the technology today, uh, a anything is possible. I, I'm not. A, I'm not. I'd never be able to s to look you in the face and say that's not possible because uh, the, the, what kids can do with computers and do with technology, I, I, I you know, a anything in my opinion is now possible. But it was just words. It was never more than that. Anything to the effect of seeing bang, bang, bang. Mm. To me. Yes. No. Are you aware of someone else getting a message like that? Daniel said that he got messages saying, fun, 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 bang, bang, bang. And what did he ever equate that to? Did he tell you? He just said these messages basically kept telling him to make sure I stayed away from him and to make uh, that girl happy. Okay. And that they knew what he was up to. They even said that they knew, like, what are like I'd text him something and for some reason they knew that I texted him and that they knew that I called him stuff like that 
do you have um, have you ever received other than that letter that other thing I also made up the bullet in the mail that made, I made that up and how long ago was that just a few months ago okay and was that an attention grabber for him again yes you still have feelings for Daniel don't you yes Okay, so you're having trouble with that. You're having trouble getting over the fact that the relationship is over uh, because I've, of the I've, terms of how it happened. I've accepted that, that it's over, but I still want to take care of him. Yeah. But unfortunately, I made a decision and I, need, I had to stick by it. Your relationship with Daniel was broken up because of your parents' ultimatum, not because you didn't care for him anymore. Yes. That's... That's an obvious p what you can say, right? Because yes. you still have feelings and you're still trying to trigger them with the bullet. You know, even just that, that are these tech, text messages you're receiving, are they fictitious? Are you making that up? No. Uh, 100%? Yes. Okay. Now, the letter you received, is it fictitious or did you make it up? Or, or sorry, is it fictitious or is it real? It's real. It's real. And but how, sorry? So, no, it just happened like before most of this stuff happened, so I just brushed it aside. Okay, so it happened before what most of what stuff happened? Most of, like, before I knew about her and before I knew, like, before she messaged me ever. Okay. Now, how often did you use this other phone? You said you said it was back when your father, that's the last time you used it, but how many times would you, you know, like, from the last Maybe year? Maybe, like, half? once a day. Once a day? Or usually, um, yeah, once a day. Who was paying for that? Daniel. Daniel was paying for that. Um, so the, the uh, incident, those two incidents that you made up, the bullet and the, and the, yes. uh, the being raped, those yes. never happened? No. Is there anything else you can think of in this... Were you dating anyone else? Did you see anyone else during these during during no. this year and a half no. layoff? Uh, dating, no. 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 I just I saw Adrian because he came he came over, but I wasn't seeing him like romantically or anything. Um, I saw just my uh, tight knit group of friends, which are uh, my girlfriend's Topaz. Topaz. Yes. Topaz's last name. Chu. Topaz Chu. Uh, her husband, Chihei Tong. And where, okay, we won't say where they live because it's being videoed, but I need to get an idea. If we haven't spoken to them, we'd like to speak to them. Okay. Who else? Um, Adrian Chung, he lives in, uh, he lives away, but sometimes he comes into town and he'll come to my house and ask my parents to take me out just for a coffee to catch up about half hour and then he takes me back home. Okay. That's, that's three. Who else is type? Adrian um, Adrian, who uh, we Adrian talked about Tim, earlier, Tim Kovitz. Tim Kovitz, you've spoken to, yeah. we've spoken to already. Edward uh, Pacifica. Pacifica. And, and yeah. so he's in that loop of tight net friends? Uh, no, he's uh, separate. Okay. Who else is in this other tight net group of friends? Um, well, we're it tight, but I don't speak to them often. Um, Cecilia Pang and uh, Jerome, we fall in and out like periodically, like maybe a couple months where we talk almost every week and then sometimes we go a month or two without talking. Jerome Liu. Okay. Um, so that's Adrian, Adrian, Topaz, Chihei, Cecilia, myself, and um, there's one more, uh, Carson. Uh, I forgot his last name. Uh, he's more like a fur, he, him and myself aren't that close, but he does hang around all of us. If we go to, um, for example, when my friend had a baby, we were all there together. Now, what about, again, I apologize for the name. It's okay. Gary Gibson Gibbons or? Uh, Gibson. Gibson? Gibson, yes. Um, uh, where is he in this? I haven't ta spoken to him in a long time. I'd say about a year, but prior to that, uh, we spoke quite a bit. Um, but he was your link to Danny, right? To uh, get to yes. Danny to drop you off. Well, he he spoke to he'd call Daniel if I like if he didn't answer my calls and um, we, we hung out on our own as well. What do you know about Daniel's girlfriend, Christine? Um, the only thing I know is that she's living with her father. 
Um, when we were in high school, uh, she lost her mother. Um, I believe she has a child, and I don't know where the father is in that. Okay. Um, Daniel's told me that, this is just what Daniel's told me, that uh, she's going through a custody battle, and uh, that every time I ask him, like, are you, what are you doing? He's like, making runs with Christine. So. Making runs with Christine? Yes. And I'm sorry, when you say uh, what runs, would, you know, for me, listening to making a run, are you making, would you draw the inference that that's back to the drug business? I would, but I kind of, I didn't go more into that. Don't go more into it. What do you, what do you take that as, as just hearing it at face value? That he was going to meet somebody for drugs or... And Christine's along for the ride? I was told, like, in his words, that he was the one taking her to go see people that she knew. That she knew? Yes. Okay. And that everything was at her house or something like that. Okay. I want you to sit tight. Do you want me to get you some water? Yes, please. Okay. I want you to sit tight. I'm just going to go talk to uh, to Deborah. She's Deborah Gladding. She's been monitoring. I'm also going to talk to the primary investigator, okay? Um, we're going to get you some water. And, and we're sort of moving through this. This is great, okay? I appreciate the fact that you're honest with me to tell me that these things were made up, okay? It's, it's very important. I can't lie, right? And you can't because it, it, it well, if you were if you were raped and you received bullets, those are some pretty significant threats, yeah. right? I understand. Okay. Um, there was also one other thing. Yeah. Um, we were getting private phone calls um, at my house as well. I did never told my brother because he was at school. Yeah. Um, when we picked up, they'd always hang up. And one time, my father had picked up. And like I said, Mondays, my mother would go dancing. Yes. And when this one time I picked up the phone, my father was already on the phone, and there was this woman on the other line, and I don't know who it was. And in, they were speaking Chinese, which is a little bit off for me because my father's Chinese isn't, isn't his first language. Okay. And uh, my father doesn't even know I, I was on the line. Um, but this woman was saying, you have to come over right away. Right away, you have to come now. And my father kept saying, I can't come over. No. And she's like, I don't care, you have to come now. Um, like I said, he still does, to this day doesn't know that I heard that conversation. And um, he, when he went uh, down the stairs to see me, because I was in the main, on the main floor, he was upstairs when he answered the phone. He was like, I'm going to go, and uh, my cousin Michelle, um, she said, I'm going to go to Michelle's house to, I believe their tap was running, or he had to, he's a handyman yeah. with the housework, so uh, they asked him to fix it. But I believe, I don't remember where they were, they were out. And I remember because I was, uh, I believe this is during the summer. Of so this past year, 2010? Yes, like yeah. summer of 2010. And... Uh, me and Michelle, we went to we go to the gym together. So uh, she had mentioned that day that she had. I I'm sorry, I I don't remember what, but she had an errand to run with her mother, and I was like, I think it was a doctor's appointment or something. And I told my dad that I believe they're out, they're not home, and he's like, I'm gonna go. So he left, and when he left, um, I had called my my aunt had. I believe my aunt had called me back or I had called her. Somehow we connected with each other. And they said that he, uh, they were not home yet, but they're on their way. They would be there in about a half hour. By the, my father never came home. And my father says he was driving around their block, waiting for them. But when I confronted him, I said, uh, I thought they were, uh, they said that they weren't home. And he's like, I was driving around the block. But when I had, I'd, didn't know how to process this and so I confided in Michelle when we were at the gym and she said that when she came home she did drive because uh, they have um, her garages in the back of her house mm -hmm. so there's like a streetway that's just garages and when my father goes over he likes to use the back door and knocks on the door in the back door because it's convenient because everyone's in the back of the house usually with the kitchen 
Um, so she said that she ran, like she drove in two circles before, like she drove around to check before uh, she went in, but my father was never there. Does, does and, Michelle speak Chinese? Yes. Um, yes, yes, she does. Is your aunt? This is your cousin, is Michelle? Yes, my cousin Michelle, yes. And your aunt's name is? Uh, Huida. Huida Le. And uh, so did, was your father ever at that house? Eventually, he, she said that he did come over, and he helped them out, and came back home. But when you listened on the phone line, did you recognize the female as being Michelle? Or, or it was mom? not. It was not her and her mother. I know that, but it was a voice I've never heard before, a lady's voice that I've never heard before. And um, like I said, these phone calls were happening periodically, but every time we answered, they they'd hang up on us. Meaning you or your mom? Yes, because my mother and I had voiced it, and my my. We, we voiced it and uh, a few days later I was home by myself and I got a private call and I didn't hear them click like hang up clicking so I yelled in Chinese do not call this number ever again and they called probably once after that and never returned like the private call stopped and so when did this stop when did this happen and when is you said the summer like, is when that by happened. the end of the summer the summer so August September like late August, early September. And is this the, to the house line? Yes. And what's the house line phone number? 905-477-3867. Okay. Okay. Sit tight. Is there any other, any other incidents that jog your memory? Any other boyfriends in between this time period? Okay, sit tight. Let me get you some water and let me ask some questions, okay? If you want to stand up and walk around, I understand. It's not, we're not telling you to sit tight literally, but it may be a couple of minutes, okay? Um, okay. What, did you need to go to the washroom? No, I just, I don't like being by myself right now. I'm going to leave the door open a little bit, okay? Okay. Is that, does that work for you? Okay. And remember, right through that glass, you can actually, I don't know, see her, but that's where oh. she's sitting. So she, you're okay. actually, you're, you're just, a, she's just in another room, but she's a part of this room. Okay. Okay. Okay, so just everything. 
everything's going. Okay. All right. Do you, do, do you need a bathroom break? Yes, please. Okay. Let me just clear the hallway, and then I'll escort you out, okay? just stand around here do you want to just wait out here or do you want to just wait inside but you could just stand up it's up to you I'm just uh... okay we'll just wait by the door then that's fine you could or not so I'm just a little rattled that's okay yeah you're doing fine I'm just trying my best you're doing good you're doing good hungry? No. No? The uh, choices I've made haven't been the best, so well, it's just... You know what? It's just part of life. I mean, it's, it's you know, I mean, we have to, we learn, and, you know, I mean, making mistakes, we make mistakes, and... Be honest, it's just I'm Some of those things are. Hmm? Instead of just saying some of those things, like my parents don't know yet, so it's just. I know. You know what? You can't worry about that. It's not, you know, you can't focus on that. I mean, 
and you did what you had to do, right? And it, and it was something that you felt that you needed to do at the time. Close the door too much, okay? I'm just going over everything and like pieces and hmm? I'm just I'm just going it through everything and I just it's just like pieces here and pieces there and I don't I don't wanna say something wrong or like just because I think I'm overthinking everything and it's just like yeah. Well I don't think you can I mean, the truth is the truth, right? It's not, you know, and it's not going to be wrong. No. Okay, it's, it, it is, it is what it is, and, um... No, just, like, with the details and everything, like, it's just... I want to get it right so, like, everything could be... Everything could be right. Okay. But it's just, like, it's pieces and... Yeah, but, I mean, then, you know, you know all the pieces are going to... They're not, they're all going to come together, and you're... It, all gonna fit, right? Because what you're gonna be, what you're saying is the truth. I'm just trying to, like, every time I think of those things, it just it gets me all worked up. But I have to think about it. But I don't, I don't want to. As in, like, it just it brings back all everything. Okay. And that's gonna happen for a little bit, though, too. You realize that, right? I that know. That's gonna happen. It's just, it's, it's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, I did it. I don't want to do it again. Yeah. But, I mean, even when you least expect it, even, you know, it's it's going to happen. And now it's just like, he's asking me these questions like I should have. I should have. I don't know, it's like maybe I should have been more, like, attentive. Like, it just happened so fast. Mm -hmm. And it's like, he's asking me, like, shoes and everything and yeah it, I can't give them the answer because I don't know well, it, and, 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 it, that, and that's right you're right and you, we don't expect you to you know you don't want to make up something no I'm not because not that, you just, know you want I, you, you I wish I was able to answer like I want to be able to answer it so 
it'd be not easier, but it's it help. Yeah. But if you don't know, you don't know. Really, that's that's the bottom line. If you don't know, you don't know. I and don't I mean, know. Who are we to say? Because we weren't there. You you're the one that's going through this. We are not there. So. Like Randy was saying, what you remember back then, you know, you've had a couple of days, and you know things start to come back in your mind. It does, you know, it's it happens. So don't be too hung up on, oh, well, I didn't remember, oh, I should have remembered, oh, why couldn't I remember? Don't. So it makes me feel like I should have. No. I was still like beating myself up like I should have. No, don't do that. You don't like, you know, you, there's no apologies needed. There's no, there's none of that. There's none of that, Jen. You don't need to, to be beating yourself up over this. Okay. This is some heavy duty stuff. I mean, this is, uh, you've been through, you've been through something, but you know, is very traumatic. Do you get a hold of Julia? No, I haven't. Still haven't heard yet. Haven't heard yet. And I kind of want to be here if you need me right on the uh, right on the go. So, but you know what? Once once I'm able to to touch base with her again, I'll do I'll do that. And, and I know that she'll get in touch with. I'm trying to use her anything to help, like... Is there anything else you can? You know what you've no, I, I'm. Just, it's just like going over again. And it's okay. Like It'll just wait till Randy comes back, and you know what? If he has some other questions for you, he'll he'll ask them.
Was that your breastplate? <laughs> Is that your chest that you're doing that against? It's a thing you um, do. It's embarrassing. <laughs> uh, when I when I lose control, I the only thing I feel I can control is what I feel. <laughs> okay. Oh, I just so I just I heard the sound. That's oh. what it was like. I felt it was the sound that drew my attention. So.
said here today was confidential with here, right? Sorry? Everything I said here today was just confidential to here, right? Just confidential to I here? Like it, I don't... Everybody knows that everyone perceives I don't want to disappoint my mother. Like, I don't want to... Like I said, I haven't told her. Like, they don't know about that university stuff. Mm -hmm. And I don't want people who saw my mother as a good person to think wrongly of her. Okay, well, what you're saying in here is not going to go anywhere. Because everyone says she's such a good mom. Yeah. And I don't want that to change. Okay. Because of my decisions and my actions. What you're saying in here is, is within the confines of this police station and, and our investigation. So it's not, you know, that's not something that we would release out to the public. Okay? Did you hear from the coroner's office? I didn't, no, no. If there's another officer that did, another detective that um, did, I can, I haven't spoken to him yet. Have they been able to find out anything? And that, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Um, when Randy comes back in here, you can ask him all, you can ask him those questions. And as well, he's not the lead investigator on this. He, we, there is a different individual that's the lead investigator. So if you've got some questions, I'll certainly try to answer them and, and then we can take it from there. But I don't want to give you information that is not correct. So I just want, you know, if there's something specific that you want to know. No, like, do they have any, like, leads or suspects? Or did anyone say where the car went yeah. after? Or? And that, that I don't know. So that would be something that, you know what, I'd have to find out for you. Because, like, is there any, anything that... Yeah. I know, I know, you have a lot of it, a lot of questions, you have a lot of questions, and, and I can't, I don't know the answers for you. It just feels like I'm answering questions, but... You're not giving a lot, you're not getting a lot of answers right now, Yeah. The waiting? <laughs> yes, I can understand. I don't like it either. Like if you're here, you can ask me. I can give him anything I can think of. But mm -hmm. I know.
Are you? Do you want something to eat? I'm starving. I don't know about you. I don't know how you can go without. I can get you something to eat. Even if it's a bagel. Okay. But you're feeling a little lightheaded. Do you want some chips or something like that? Do you need some junk food? You sure? <sighs> what can I get you? If you could eat something right now, what would it be? I'm hungry. <laughs> Yeah, but you're lightheaded. Maybe you should sit down a little bit too, okay? Because you've been doing a lot of pacing. Maybe you need to just sit down for a bit. If you need something with some sugar in it just to give you some energy. Okay. I heard your stomach. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it, but it's just... No, it's your stomach saying you're hungry. Want a candy bar? No, I'm okay. Okay. Sorry? More water? I'm okay.
Hi, Jennifer. Hey. Here. Take some Kleenex. Take some Kleenex. Tell me what you're feeling right now. What's going on? You might as well get used to this. You gotta get it out. So tell me what you're feeling right now. I'm just gotta think. If it makes me feel like I should have. It's a thing called survivor's guilt, okay? That you're gonna go through. That you're gonna, you're gonna, and this is like the, the, the stuff about the therapy and, and getting to speak to someone because there's stages of grieving that you're gonna go through. Okay, and this is the only way you're going to go through this is with properly is with help. I think victim services is engaged, right? They're they're trying to help you, so just stick with that. Okay, it's a long road, but it's it can be a very successful road. Okay, and and uh, what you're feeling, I hate to say, is normal, but it is. It's something that a lot of people who are in the same circumstance will feel. Okay, but. I, I, what I want to do is I want to finish off on this so that we can let you go and get and, and get, get out of the police station, okay? Because I appreciate your time and I appreciate your help. So what is in the safe? Um, the last time I opened it, my mom took out our passports. And I... I... She's the, she has the combination. I don't have the combination. You don't have the combination for the safe? No. Just your mom? Just my mom. Okay. And so there was passports, no large quantities of cash in there? Mm. Not, that I, not that I know of. Because okay. uh, she asked me to help pay for our two trips. Okay. We recently went on. And what did you get? The, what did you have the two thousand dollars for? What did you? Where did you make that money? I had. I was saving up to get a new cell phone. Do you have a BlackBerry? I gave it to Daniel. Okay. My the, brother gave it to me from his friend. But you have so the BlackBerry is it in your name? That you've given no. to Daniel. So is Dan? It was yours, and you've given it to my, Daniel. My brother's friend didn't. It was an old BlackBerry. And my brother's friend gave it to him, and I gave it. I gave it to Daniel. When did you give it to Daniel? Um, I gave it to a friend to give to Daniel. How long ago? A couple, maybe a week. A week ago. A week, uh, maybe a week and a bit. What's the pin? command for that you know do you have a personal identification number for security reasons have you ever been given that by by blackberry no no there's there's no lock that i know of. okay so um daniel is was and likely still remains to be a drug dealer self-admitted uh, when he was in the air the other day no, so stepping back from that is, I had asked you is prior to the incident, when's the last time you spoke to Daniel? What I should have said to you is, when is the last time from today for, back that you spoke to Daniel? When is the last time you met with him and spoke with him? I saw him here yesterday when I was leaving. Did you talk to him? Just briefly. You didn't see him or talk to him any other times other than right here in the police station? And if I told you that Daniel says that you spoke to him, you did have a conversation with him somewhere else? He would be lying? I spoke to him was when he asked for the Blackberry. And that was a week ago? Yes, because my grandfather had just, he was in the hospital and I snuck over and dropped it off for a friend at his paintball place. And who is the friend that you gave it to? I only know his first name. Uh, Hessen. Hessen? 
And where's the paintball place? Uh, Victoria Park and McNichol. Right at Victoria Park and McNichol? Uh, between McNichol and Steeles on Victoria Park. When there's a lot of people, remember I told you about the media? Right? They're bad. They can be very bad when they start to sniff around and they, they sense something. And I can tell you that the media is portraying that this was supposed to be some sort of drug-related, that you guys weren't a random target, that you were a targeted house because of drug activity. What would you say to that? I don't deal the drugs. Okay. Tell me more about that. You don't deal the drugs. Are you involved in the transportation and dis no. distribution? No. Have you ever been with Danny? This is something that's very important. Have you ever been with Danny when Danny's doing that? He normally leaves me with a friend and says he's going out with his friend. And, like, normally. When is that normally? How that long? was three, four years ago. Three or four years Was he dealing with big quantities? That you, were you aware of it? Honestly, I, I wanted nothing to do with it, so I refused to know what he was doing. Okay, and the times that you snuck out and spoke to him, how many times a month up until the last time you handed the, the BlackBerry? Once a week. You'd see him once a week. Well, prior to this, I'd only see him once a month because I went away to, uh, twice with my family. Yeah. So I wasn't able to. Uh, go anywhere I was out with them so this month I've only seen him twice this month I mean October I saw him twice in October and you but you text you said you text message him every day once you, you, you at least once more a day. or less um, you know and that could be a string of, of text messages right it's not just hey how are you doing fine and that's the end of the text message you'd be a string of communication how you were texting him. it was you'd just be where are you at are you at work how are you and miss you or what are you doing today and the so when you go out and see him for once during the time once once a week i i tell my parents that i was going to class yes and before class or after class i'd go buy him lunch and bring it by his work and sometimes i would see him and sometimes i'd just give it to a co-worker to give to him and how long when you see him how long would you see him for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, because he was working. Uh, when you weren't, when he wasn't working and you were able to get out and see him, how that long? That hasn't happened in a long time. And how long's a long time? The last time I saw him outside of that was when Gary picked me up and I got caught by my parents. And that was, I'd say, a year, if not a year and a half almost. And why, why did he want your BlackBerry? He said that he had sold his BlackBerry, so he needed a phone. And that BlackBerry, what, like, I'm, I'm kind of confused. Is Was that an active phone? No. Because now we're talking Which... about three phones now. We're or we got a SIM card, we got the phone that your parents know you have, and you got a BlackBerry up until a week ago. Yes. So The BlackBerry is what I was using with my own Roger SIM card. The phone I'm using now was an old phone that I no longer used. Okay, so because the reception was no good. The BlackBerry was your normal phone that yes. you were using on a regular basis. Yes. And um, and you would switch SIM cards. If so, if you were going to communicate with him with the other SIM card, you'd put the SIM card in that BlackBerry and talk to him through that. I had an iPhone. That you had I an kept, iPhone. I kept in my room that my parents didn't know about, because um, my brother, I had one that Daniel gave me earlier, but it broke. Yeah. So my brother, he, what he did was he fix the part so he can have one that he used himself but uh the one i had wasn't fully functioning it was just able uh, it had no internet access on it so i just kept it for phone calls and i kept it hidden and where is that phone now it should be still on my in my room yes where uh, i believe it was on my laptop table or something or on my counter and it doesn't have a sim card in it right now no, I don't keep the SIM card in it just in case my parents asked. Okay. So there's an iPhone on by your desk, on your desk, somewhere yes. in that in your room. Yes. And um, 
the Rogers, the, I mean the Blackberry that you had had up until a week, and it went to Daniel. And and for what reason it went to Daniel? He had a black, another, a newer Blackberry, but he said someone wanted to buy it, like a friend of his wanted to buy it, and that he needed a phone, temporarily. So, so I, he took your phone. So I, I had another phone as well. So I said, okay, I'll lend you this one. So, um, it sounds as if you couldn't let Danny go. Like, you're, you're still there. You're still hoping. The hope isn't much, but... But it, you're still hoping. I still care. You're not, you're not walking away from him, right? You haven't walked away from him, even with the comments that you've received, these comments from... I had, and then... But... I had for a while... I disappeared from him for a while, but I needed, it was just, he, he's that calm, that he can, he can make me calm, so I reached back out to him. So, is the, is it you instigating all the communication, or does he reach back, does he start? He reached back as well. Okay. Now, you have to figure, as I said, the media can be horrific in some cases, and I, I had told you not to read or pay attention to the news. No. And I know for a fact that in one of the newspapers that the angle that's being portrayed right now is that this was a drug, that you guys were um, uh, not a random but a targeted residence because of drug-related activity. You and your family were engaged in drug-related activity. Now, is it possible that Danny that you are being mistaken somehow as being involved in his life in that angle of things. Well, I haven't been around his life for a while, like going out with him. But I wouldn't say it's completely out of the question, but I haven't, I don't, I don't go around with him when he's doing that kind of stuff. I, I don't like it and I refuse to be a part of that. And now what do you say about Chris, the, the comment about Christine and the running are I kind of took a blind eye to that, I guess. But it, are, are you, is, it, is it your understanding that she may be not only part of it, but linking him to the people involved in this activity? And because, like I told you, he gives me that answer, and I kind of take a blind eye. But if I were to tell you what I thought of what was that, I would think that she, she also has her own thing going her own business. Does because, she work for a living? Uh, what I know of her is that uh, I think he mentioned that she worked at No Frills but it wasn't like she didn't work often. Like I think he, he mentioned that she doesn't have a job once but I know she worked for No Frills. I don't know if she still does. Um, Which No Frills do you know? Unfortunately I'm, I'm not sure. Do you know what area of, of town or where she lives? She lives at Mid Midland and Steeles. At Midland and Steels? Yes. On the Markham or Scarborough side? On on, on the Mar uh, Scarborough side. On the Scarborough side. And Christine, you don't know her last name? Felipe. Felipe? What's um, that? What nationality is she? Filipino. Filipino. Um, and how old is Christine? I, I only know she's older than me. I'm not sure if she's his age or older. I'm not sure. Did he ever say where he met her? We all, we all went to the same high school. And they also... Uh, yeah, they all, we all went to the same high school. What school was that? Mary Ward. Mary Ward? Yes. Now, how would you feel if, you know, like, Daniel is the one who's, through, through whatever activity that he's engaged in and you've been around but not necessarily having an understanding because you're seen with him, that he's brought this back to you? I don't know if that's in fact happened. I'm trying to find a rhyme or reason for why your house was targeted. I'm still trying to figure out how they got in your house. Like you didn't hear, you didn't hear a doorbell. You didn't hear a door knock. You didn't hear a door kicked in. You didn't. I was. I said I was watching no, TV on the phone. But I. I don't know how. Yeah, I, I. I know. We went over that back and back and forth. We don't know how. 
So somehow they got into your house by getting through your mom down on the lower level, right? Because she's the only one who's down she there. She's the only one down there. So it's very confusing. Um, we do have surveillance cameras from the area, right, that explain that, well, hopefully, but it's, it's you know, that's still a work in progress. Um, but generally, random events are not, in most cases, random. There's a rhyme or reason why they've come to your house. But from what you've told me inside the house, the only thing that you hear them saying to you is they're looking for money. They're not looking for a specific quantity of money? No. Do you ever hear number one telling number three about the quantity of money that he's recovered? No. I don't hear that. All the comment you hear from number one really is, is, is it's time to go. It's, we've been here too long. We've been here too long. Yes. And number three was the one that says, was, was my father and all I could, what I heard from him was basically, where's more? You're lying. So you're telling me that you, you had no involvement in what happened. Meaning not saying how the outcome came, but you you had no involvement in, in any type of illegal activity that would have drawn you or the attention of you to have bad people come to your house looking for large sums of money. You're not involved in this any which way. Because the question obviously stands, Jennifer, is you're upstairs and they're downstairs. No. Right? So it's a natural concern when, why would they leave you alone? Why would they not do the same to you? And you can't answer that question? The only thing I can say is he said I cooperated. The, but I asked him to take me. The number one the guy? Mouth. The number one guy said you cooperated. Okay, there's no, you had no threats. And again, we're back to the fact that you admittedly lied. Okay, not to me, right? No. Not to me. No. You admittedly lied, you've lied to your parents, right? About going to school. You've lied to, to Danny about being, Daniel about being raped and about receiving a bullet. Who's to say this whole thing isn't a lie? that what you're telling me is a lie. Because if you are lying, it's the most cold-blooded thing that I have oh ever my faced God. in my life. <laughs> there is nothing that you've said to me today is a lie. And I, I want to... There, I want to just put a little preamble. Not, nothing in here that you might have mistaken because of order of events. I'm saying to you right now, is there anything throughout the course of your statement today where you've lied to me? From your interaction with Danny, Daniel, from your... I'm not involved in drugs and I don't have anything to do with them and we don't have large sums of money. What about life insurance policies? Do your parents have life insurance policies? I I think I I don't know. You don't I know, know they had a they had a I I have one of myself. Yes. And uh my mom uh, they used to have one for me when I was younger. Okay. But uh, half of that went to education, half went to uh, life insurance. And when they found out I, I, uh, I didn't go to university, they, they asked for the money back. So hang on a second here. You told, to me that, you told me that they never knew you didn't go to university. When did they find out that you didn't go to university? I told them that I graduated, but I never went to university. 
that I went for two years, but I never finished. Okay. And they wanted the money back as a result of that? Yes. So you did actually tell your parents somewhat of the truth that you never went to university, or but it's, it's half-truths. Yes. So back to this line is um, where we're talking about the fact that uh, of the line, right, is that it's... I a don't deal the drugs. I don't associate with that. Okay. I honestly, I don't. Now, back to another very difficult question, but if I don't ask it, I'm going to be, you, it's an obvious one. The resentment that you had, that you may have had towards your parents for the interference in your relationship and your life and essentially locking you down in your house. At the end of the day, I love my parents and I chose to be with them. And if I wanted to, I could have just left, but I didn't. I wanted to stay with them and take care of them. So this wasn't some evil plot that you thought up to... Oh my God, no. No interaction, no belief, no, you didn't have anything to do with this thing at all, whatsoever. No. You don't engage in illegal activity? No. Because you know that it'll be very easy, it, it will be a very easy thing to discredit you on, right? We're, we're in the process of trying to add credibility to what you tell us, and that's through the process of asking people and doing whatever. Through that same process, it will be very easy to find the flaws in what you've said, which again then turns the focus back to you. Okay? I don't... It's a natural progress, it's a natural thing that investigators do. We eliminate people or we draw our attention to them. It's a natural uh, thing. It's, a, it's not brain surgery. Okay? What did you talk to Michelle about? Did you talk to Michelle last night? Or the day before? That you were coming, about talking to the police? I just asked her how she was feeling because she was nervous. What did you tell her? Just tell the truth. Tell you what you know. And the threats that you you say that you've received, the threats that you've talked about, are the same threats that you're mentioning from the text messaging. They're not really... You Did you receive any life-threatening, or are they basically no. to stay away from... Just the email saying... The, the message is saying, stay away. From Danny? Yes. Okay, I heard a knock on the door. Get bear with me.
anyone come in? Just up here, okay? Right back. And just up there.
Okay, we're, we're, we're done, essentially. <sighs> How are you feeling? I'm sorry, you really scared me. Did I? What did I scare you about? Sit down. Sit down and, and t take a load off. Tell me how. Tell me how you're feeling, and how I scared you. I don't want you walking away from here thinking I'm evil. I want you to walking around from here thinking that this guy is helping investigate my mom's murder, and he's going to turn over every stone possible to make sure that we catch the people who do that. That's what I want you feeling. So I don't want you walking away from here thinking that I'm a, I'm, I scared you, or I'm, I'm a bad man. Sometimes we have to ask very, very difficult questions, but it's my job, okay? And you would expect that from me. And it's not, you're not the only person that we're asking this stuff of, right? But you're the most obvious person that we have to ask this stuff to. And there's, it's just, it's just the way we operate. It's the way we have to operate. It's a tough job to, to, the, to deal with someone's murder. And there's some very bad people, and there's some very tough questions that need to be asked. So you have to, I hope you understand that. I understand that. It's just. It's hard to take. Have you lied to me? No. No? You haven't lied to me about anything? I said whatever I could to help. Okay. So. If you've always told the truth, the truth will never hurt you. It may get you into a bit of trouble, right? The truth can get you into trouble if you've done some things wrong. But generally, in most cases, if you tell the truth, you'll always be fine. So that's, that's the avenue. That, that, that's the avenue you have to think about. And, and what you, I can always, I never do anything wrong if I tell the truth. And if I've made, if I've said some things that are lies or, I've held something back because I think it might hurt me. Those are the things that will cause people to look at you more intently. Because the question is, is why would that person do that to me? They've got something to hide, right? So, you know, the fact that you've lied to your parents over a long period of time, the fact that you lied about to Daniel about those other two events, you know, those are disturbing. But I don't live in your shoes, and I would never judge you on that fact, but from an outsider looking in, to have to live under those conditions, to have to lie continually, you're going to ask the question, why? And if that's the way that you have to live, that's the way you have to live. But people will judge you on your lying. Right. So is there anything else that you think that you can think of that might help help us? This one person who added me on Facebook. And I found it weird that he had added me out of nowhere. And I had looked in common friends and saw that he was friends with this girl, that girl, Christine. When I spoke to Daniel about it, I don't know if he told her or not. But I asked him, like, is she just casual friends with him, or is she good friends with him? And the day after I asked him this, they were no longer friends on Facebook. Who is this guy? What did he look like? Casey Law. I've never met him. Apparently went to high school as, as well, but I don't recall ever meeting him. And he kept asking me questions that, I don't know if it's just his personality, but he asked me questions that I thought were too abrupt to ask someone you just met. Like what? Give me an example. He asked if 
I had a boyfriend and if I was looking for a boyfriend and if I engaged in sex and things like that. So that's the kind of question he was, you know, provoking you. Casey Law, and did you recognize the name from school? Recognizable, but again, I don't remember ever even having a conversation with him. And uh, so he said he went to your school? Yes, but he was older than me. He's older than you. And um, what what does he look like? Chinese guy. Yeah. When I, when I talked to him, he said that he was uh, working like security. Okay. So that's that's on 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 things that strange things that have happened to you recently. That's that's it that you can think of is that that one and plus obviously the 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 stuff that was going on with Christine and the the ghost messages that you were receiving, right? From from these were numbers that didn't exist or they didn't have any. No, it was blocked. Blocked numbers. And when I called Rogers, they said that's not possible. For a text message to come in with a blocked number? Yes. Okay. So, um, you know that whatever everything you've told us has been under oath? Yes. You know that part of it, our job is, is to go back and look at what you've told us to try and match up to the reality of what we have, of evidence that we have, right? And you said you're, you, were, you, you said essentially nothing, you've, you didn't really change much from your first statement to your second statement, right? You've, you've, uh, you've explained more, we've, we've covered off more, but is there anything in this course of these uh, that you think you want to change? You made me like now. I feel like I've said something wrong. You have not. I, I don't know if you said you have to me. You've no, said, no, I've said everything that I know that so, is true. Yeah, and I'm asking you is if from reflecting on what you've told me today, which is fairly consistent with the first statement, it's just there's more detail now. Is there anything in there from what you've been going down and what you think? Be, it should be right on the tip of your tongue. If you want to change something, it would be like. You know what? I, I said this, and I, I I really meant this. It's not something you've missed. It's something that you knowingly have said that you want to change, that you know was wrong, or could be taken wrong. Okay. Well, well, first thing, the school thing. Yes. I didn't go to university, but I told my parents that I went for a few years. Right. How long Just ago did you tell? How long did you tell them that? How long ago did they find out? I told them everything when I was going, I was seeing Daniel, and that. I only I told them I only went partial school. Okay. And I told them all. And all when else. was that? What year was that? When? How long ago? A year and a half ago. So is this when the ultimatum come down? Is after? The, is that at that point in time? The ultimatum came about a. Or there, there's always been ultimatums, like they always gave me a second. But the one that you made the choice where you were at, because you say that was about a year and a half ago too, is that part of when you came clean, to a certain extent. You say you came clean. Coming clean would be mom and dad. No, I didn't, I didn't I never come clean, to... but I came like when I when I said when I said what they know. And that was a year and a half ago. Yes. Okay. So there's one that you've we've clarified. Is there anything else that you can think of? Is there anything that? Like I, everything I said is what I said. That's like, all. I, that's all I know. Yeah, you but can't. But you're just making me feel like you're I'm. You're looking at me to for me to try and tell you what I think you've said was wrong. I don't know. I, I, I'm telling you that I'm. Um, I, I've heard everything that you've had to say. I don't have this uh, uh, miraculous uh, TV ability that says I can pull out a chunk of this and say to you, that portion's wrong. I can tell you from what you've told us, we're going to compare it with all the evidence we have and see how consistent it is. There's no way you're expected to be 100%. It's impossible. Okay? Eyewitnesses for every event we know are 
have don't have the ability to recall everything. So that's why we ask you do to the best of your ability. My concern lies in the fact of your lying. Okay? You've come clean. You've never lied to me before, right? I've never met you to be a liar, but the fact is is that you've lied about stuff to Daniel. You've lied to your parents. So could you be lying to me? I can't. Why couldn't you be lying to me? Because you're scaring me. Doesn't mean that I, you couldn't be lying to me, right? I don't know you. I've known you now for probably five hours intermittent. I hope you're not lying to me, right? That's all I can hope for. But the fact of the matter is, is that those three things are sitting there saying, you know, like, you have the ability to trick your parents for a long period of time. They just weren't in tune with what I was doing. Yeah. Very explainable, and I also weren't. Li I wasn't living where you are, right? And I'm, so I'm not going to prejudge you because I, people do what they need to do to survive. So it could very easily be justified as a survival mechanism. This is the best avenue that you saw it and you were stuck in it. Okay? But the fact is, is that my job is, is trying to get the root of a, of a very serious crime. And I have to explore every avenue that we possibly can. So I'm going to do everything in my power to either prove us as, as our police agency, prove or disprove what you've told us. The more we prove or can corroborate the more credibility you, you have as, as a witness, okay? That's gonna happen. We may even ask you to come back again. Again, it will be not for, you will not be explaining what happened in a grand scheme of things, because you've done that up and down and backwards. It may be for points of clarification, okay? Because again, we're speaking to, we're gonna be going and likely speaking to some of your friends and your relatives and it's just points of clarification. It may not happen. It, it may, you know, I'm only saying that it may, I told you I didn't want to do the five and six and seven interviews with you. Well, after today, that's not gonna happen. But we may be contacting you to help us for some other points that we come across, okay? Again, it goes back to your credibility, but I don't, no one's gonna sit you down and crank you through um, the events unless you were involved in it, right? And then I can't, then all, all promises are, all, everything comes off. If you had some involvement in this, then, then I'm just saying all the, all the rules. If you didn't have anything to do with this and you're telling me the truth, then we may be calling you to add, is this true what this person's saying that this way? And we may be asking you points like that, okay? You, you're our only link. You're it. Until your dad regains his back and being able to be, be, be spoken to, right now you're our only link to this case. So we're, we may rely on you heavily on, until we can speak to your father. Okay? So don't be afraid. If you've told the truth, the last thing you should be afraid of is, is anything. If you've told the truth and you've been truthful through this whole process, then you're helping. You're doing your part, okay? And don't be afraid of me. I'm just afraid because, you know, like I know everything is just all pointing negatively right now, and I, I don't understand why. It's not all pointing negatively. And you know what? You're, you're, so you're misunderstanding things that you're thinking it's all negatively pointing anywhere. It's not pointing anywhere right now. We are still gathering and gathering and gathering. There is no direction that we're there's nothing. You are not a suspect in this, in this investigation, okay? You're a witness and a victim of a crime. I know, but I'm just, I'm just, I feel that like the way you're, you're speaking to me, it's kind of like, I know you said that you had to say those things, but it's, yeah. it's here and I've already said it to the special victims yesterday, but there's like ideas in my head. Yeah. And I'm afraid to say it out loud, but... Ideas about speculation of what happened? Of how it happened? Ideas of why... Why wasn't I there? It, it, it's... You... You... That... 
psychologically is an issue that you need to straighten out with counseling, okay? For you to speculate into the investigation as to why you weren't there, unless, unless it's standing out, you, I believe you said in your opinion was is that... They said I cooperated. You cooperated, right? And in, uh, in, a, in a case that makes no sense, that could be the only sense that we get out of the investigation, is that strange things happen, right? Strange things happen. So, yeah, unfortunately, uh, at times some of us have to point the finger, seem like we're pointing the finger, and it really is just to provoke you to see what you're going to do, how you're going to respond, okay? So it's only a question, and it ha it's been answered. And if you've been truthful, okay, you have nothing to fear, absolutely nothing, okay? <laughs> What do you want to say? That I got a phone call once, and like I, I said earlier, I don't know if you it it was like zoned in, but they contact they said that they can make everything disappear, and that's what I'm afraid of. Because you're asking me all these questions, and I'm answering them truthfully, but I'm afraid that. Well, I, I can't answer them for you. Well, there's some, you know, not your the technology exists. You know, um, there is some technology out there. I'm sure that can make things disappear. And I know that not everything is captured. So, you know, we go back to interviewing someone else who may say, yeah, well, she told me about this and uh, or I had similar things. So there's other ways around it. It's not this case isn't going to hinge on small inconsistencies. Right? It's not going to hinge on small It's not the inconsistency. It's I'm afraid of what is out there. Because you, you shine a light that it could have been because of what he's involved in. Is, and it, if, is it not a possibility? I know. Like, you have given me that. Mm -hmm. And with that, I'm just like, I'm scared because it could be anybody out there. Right now, it could be anyone. And that's the reality of it. Right, we don't. We're the theories. We're, we're we're at the same position as you is speculating as to theories and and reasons why, and um, you can't be confined in your theories because you know if you're sitting here looking like this, you know at a small with the blinders on that this is, it's it's like this. We got to think at every possible way that it could th that this crime could have been happening, and you know saying that it could have been Daniel. Yeah, it could have been Daniel. Could have been in a random act. Yeah, it could have been a random. Could they have been targeted because of something did? Yeah, it could have been. We've got to explore them all. And then try and figure out which one, through motive and opportunity and means, was likely to have occurred. And hopefully we start to focus down on suspects. But right now, there's no fingers being directed at anyone. It's just I feel... That's what you're meant to feel. Okay? That's what you're meant to feel. But there's nothing right now other than what you told me about the changing of where you fixed it at the end about your I just wanted name. to clarify that. Yeah. Okay. So is there anything else? Not off the top of my head. So we're back to this last question that... Uh, comes back to is, is there anything else I should note uh, to understand your statement fully? And that's, again, is that this is where you'll drop in that I took five hits of acid before I, you're not on drugs, you're not uh, taking liquor, you're not taking any medication, you're, you, you voluntarily gave this statement and you did it having a full understanding of what you've told me? Yes? Yes. Okay, so the recorders are being shut off as we speak. The time...